I love Sneaky V. This is an opinion-based podcast, and nothing stated in this podcast should be taken as anything other than opinion. Welcome to the Sneaky V Podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not the CU Podcast, it's the Sneaky V Podcast, SV. SV, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> why, don't, why don't you introduce yourself? So uh, I'm Sneaky V, I've been uh, gaming, you know, practically since I was a kid, and you know, got into like 90s uh, console games, and from there it's, it's just, it's, it's kept going all my life. Yeah. And, uh, yep. I have, a, I have a small YouTube channel. I, I just post up random stuff on there, like to do with my life or uh, gaming. Uh, I like cars too. You know, it's it's all good. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. can get on the subject. Uh, how about yourself, Kevin? Uh, let's let's hear a little bit about yourself. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> sort of sort of along the same line, right? Uh, obviously, you know that I listen to. A couple of your videos and that's why we're here discussing it because there's a lot of people who are super angry in the comments about the amico so we have a bunch of subjects that you kind of outlined here i don't know do you want to jump through them you want me to jump through them uh, yeah if, if you want to yeah if you if you want to sort of like uh yeah just just point point everything off to me and just list it off and yeah we start off uh to your notes yeah yeah okay so the first thing we've got here right is the price so the price of the amico is what is it it's 250 is it 249.99 it's 249.99 you know uh, let's just round it up by a cent because yeah i, I think that retail bullshit is just uh nonsense <laughs> yeah <laughs> A set lower is going to be like a, a decision maker, right? <laughs> yeah, that one penny is going to make the difference, right? Like, yeah, like, like, uh, especially in Canada. Like, I'm from Canada. I'm not sure where you are from, from Canada. Uh, like, uh, but like, uh, yeah, like we we kind of rounded off uh, like everything here now. We don't we don't use the penny anymore. It's not in circulation. I'm not sure about the states if uh, the penny is still yeah uh, in circulation down there. No, the yeah. the pen. We still use the penny. Yeah, it, it's it's just like a it's like a weird thing, right? Uh, it got phased out here because people were just like sick of it, and it, it's turned into like a, a scrapper's dream, right? People collect pennies here, and then they just you know the the value of the penny just got to be, it, 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 the cost of it just to make the penny got phased out. But I'm I'm getting sort of off topic here, right? We're talking about the Miko and the price here. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, uh, b besides like a penny being a difference, right? Uh, and the pricing structure being kind of like stupid. Uh, it, it's so GameStop's their first retailer, pretty much. And they listed it with three options the $2.99 uh, Galaxy Purple. Uh, yeah, edition. And yeah, the, I saw the, that. The, I saw that. The, the $250 uh, other two color options with the black and the white. So, uh, yeah, they're the f first retailer. Surprise, surprise, to pick it up. <laughs> GameStop, yeah, and they're sink they're a sinking ship, basically. I mean, uh, it's... nobody likes GameStop, really. I mean, <laughs> it's like uh, you have to go there, but I, personally, I'd prefer to go to Walmart or something like that. I don't want to give my money to GameStop. But that's that. That's a whole other argument in of itself, right? It's, it's like a, it's like a stop sign, right? You're you're like you're like driving your car along. You see a stop sign, you're going to stop. You're not going go. You're you're not going go right away, right? You gotta you gotta stop before you go in there. Right? You gotta, yeah. I gotta be careful with my money. <laughs> <laughs> so so why don't you tell tell me, all right, uh, why you think it's not worth the price? So, uh, I I did a whole video. I'm not sure if you watched it yet, but uh, I talked to, like briefly about the hardware, right? I didn't want to put this video out honestly because it, it's it's the cold hard facts that what's in it is is the actual thing. Because I looked up the specs online. And, yeah, uh, yeah. It, you said it was uh it was likely going to be uh close to a banana pie, pretty much, right? 
Yeah, if, if if nobody knows what Banana Pi is out there, it's it's basically an Android or Linux uh, based device, right? It's a hardware device, and a lot of Android and uh, Linux based devices or operating systems work uh, run on it, and it's very cost effective because it's a it's like a microcomputer, right? And and uh, uh, Raspberry Pis are really uh, popular and inexpensive for the gaming community to load up emulators and ROMs on it. And, and everybody knows what a Raspberry Pi is, so everybody should know what a Banana Pi is. It's just a little bit more powerful, right? And uh, I don't know about the newer Raspberry Pi, the fourth one that's out right now, but that's pretty much what it is. I'm getting a little off topic, but yeah, that's what it is. But yeah, well, it's sort of irrelevant because a Banana Pi is about a $100. And granted, it's just a board, right? But the specs are pretty close in line with the uh, the Amico there, right? They're they're like spot on, right? And and flash memory, right? When I, when I pointed out the flash memory, right? Uh, I didn't I didn't put the clip in with Tommy talking. I think he talked with uh, Review Tech USA, the king of the shells. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, he talked about like uh, he answered somebody on the chat room about upgrading the flash memory, and and that could be do that could be done on the assembly line easily, right? Flash memories, it's a th it's like a thing you could like regular RAM you could add in and take out. It's not like a thing that's built into the whole whole design of the board. If if you want to uh, get a overall picture of how uh, circuit boards are designed, that's pretty much what what it is, right? Flash RAM is not it's not relevant relative to the actual facts of, of the specs that I matched up with the, the Miko. Yeah, yeah, it's just a chip they solder on anyways, right? I mean, it, a couple extra pennies, that's it. But yeah, your, your, your opinion is basically that it's not worth the price, mostly just because of the specs? Is that, is that what you're thinking? It's it's like a it's a banana pie board, pretty much. They're developing Android based games on there, and they said that they're using Unity as one of the engines. Right, if if you want to compare Unity to a, a engine, let's let's look at uh, Unity and uh, what, it's like a three D O engine. And there's there's other engines that programmers use. Right, Unity is pretty much like the most basic engine you could use for for developers right now out there for gaming everybody's using it, everybody their yeah. mother and father because it's it's the east of use of it and uh yeah they're designing this thing kind of smart right because it's so low cost to design it and it, it's to release the games on it right uh anybody can program like low powered games on it, it like slap it in right you don't need too much skill set from a programming point of view to program for this this platform if you want to call it a platform, I, I don't want to acknowledge it as a platform. That's just well, me. Well, I mean, that's a whole debate in and of itself because, I mean, Tommy, you know, he loves to laugh at, uh, what's that platform? Google Stadia, right? He's always laughing at Google Stadia when, is that really any worse than the Amico, right? I mean... <laughs> yeah, they're they're both like uh, they're both like yoke of jokes, right? That's that's a line I use, right? You might as well like you know sl sl uh, you might as well slap a fucking egg on it, right? It's a fucking yoke of a joke, <laughs> you know. And, and when they talk about these platforms, right? It's like they have egg on their fucking forehead, man. It's it's a fucking joke, man. It, it, it's it's honestly it's it's a big joke. Uh, mind my language, right? I don't want to really get too too off with the cursing here, but it's hilarious. It's, it's, it's absolutely hilarious. Uh, cause, cause people haven't bought into the streaming, you know, the streaming thing, the streaming gaming yep. thing. Yep. So, so people didn't like, like what Tommy's doing, right? He's, he's not reinventing the wheel as much as he, he, he has a, a, a television a wheel on his controller. Right? He's not, <laughs> he has the wheel on his controller, but he's not reinventing the wheel, man. Like honestly, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you, you can put like uh, RGB lights on the fucking controller to like dazzle like four year olds, but you're not going to dazzle fucking grown men. Besides the guys that grew up with uh, the original Intellivision that were brainwashed into this thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, that's a that's a whole thing too, right? You've got all these guys who are uh, really not receptive to any level of criticism at all. 
you've got like for example you you even say like the slightest thing critical about the Miko, and these guys are like going to nail you to the friggin cross there is no discussion i mean it starts at the top with the you know the head honcho we've got you know tommy who you can't say anything critical i mean you say something critical about him and he's going to come into your whether it's a, a thread on uh you know like on atari age or whether it is uh a YouTube post, he is going to show up, he's going to tell you to DM him, take it offline or take it to private messages and then yell at you about how you're wrong. And then, I mean, you've seen it no doubt in your own videos where uh, people are just lambasting you with insults, right? There's no, no uh, area for discussion, basically. Yeah, I, I agree with everything you're saying, Kev. Man, it, it's it's hilarious. The whole thing. Uh, they think I'm doing this out of like spite, hatred, or uh, you know, g generally like I'm a leadist. They they keep labeling. The I thing, I've right? I've heard that term it's so hilarious. many times. Okay, okay, say what you want about me, right? I have thick skin. Like I'll give everybody a like a, a background of like wh what I used to do in the industry, right? As a profession, I used to be in security, right? And I, you have to have thick skin to be out in the public dealing with people ongoing, right? So, so you know, I'm not hiding myself, too. If you look at my YouTube videos, you can see my face there, right? You can, you can find out my name online. You can, you can find that out. I'm not hiding. I'm not no, no anonymous troll, man. <laughs> like, like, I have thick skin, right? And, and I'm only voicing my opinion, right? I'm not saying to these guys, hey, look at that price, right? Look at that price. That's ridiculous. Blah blah blah. When you could get this and that, right? I'm not. I'm not just saying that, right? I'm. I'm. I'm not preventing them to make their decision for them. I'm only putting the information out there for them. These guys need to chill out and, and take a fucking red pill, man. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think. I think uh, they're. There needs to be a little bit of cooler heads all all around, right? I mean, there are some people who are like haters, and there are people who who are like absolute shills. And I know, I know, you said like uh, what's his name, Rich from Review Tech. That guy was yeah. he was yeah, shilling Richie, pretty Richie. hard, right? I, I I'll I'll tell you something like my history with Rich, right? I've never met the guy, but he's. He's done a podcast with uh, this this one Canadian, right? This one fellow Canadian called uh, Liana K, right? And she's uh, she's a wife of this famous uh, Canadian called Ed the Sock, right? And he did a podcast for a short period of time on YouTube with her. And for whatever reason, he doesn't do it with her anymore. But he, he sort of, like over the years, right? I've been subscribed to that guy up till now recently for almost like 10 years, right? He's one of the guys that I've been subscribed to YouTube for the longest time. And... and yeah, I understand. You got to make a living on YouTube, right? You you got to make a living because you do full YouTube full time, and it's it's becoming acknowledged as more of a, a profession, right? Yep. And I I get rich. You got to make money, but rich rich right? I'll give you a background of rich. Rich started off as a very small channel like myself, right? And and I'm not I'm not like uh my goal isn't to try to do this full time, right? I got a real, real world job, and, and uh, I, I haven't, I haven't like fully bought into the YouTube thing as being viable completely. But it, it's, it's people tell me, right? I, I've been critical of it. People tell me, hey, look, you, you should acknowledge it as a, a real career, right? Because you got to get with the times as you get older. Everybody gets old. Everybody dies. That's, that's like a fact that you can't get away with, right? And, yep. and I'm, 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 eating, I'm eating that fact up. I'm eating that. YouTube, Twitch, like all, all these online platforms, they're becoming actual viable jobs in the future. So, so the one f f fact that I want to say about Rich is, you know, he's transitioned over time, and he's he's I've I've watched the guy over the years, start from small YouTuber to big YouTuber, and he used to go off. He still goes off on YouTube, right? About like being for the little guy and being for the consumer, bullshit, man. He t he did a complete 180 and he fucking completely sold out to Tommy, man. <laughs> Tom Tommy, I sort of got Tommy made, made a phone call to him. He's like, "How much money do you want?" Because he he's the biggest platform that's <laughs> oh, God. on. He's got like nearly a million YouTube subscribers, and, and Rich, 
he he talks he still till to this day, man. He talks shit about other people, and he talks about like uh you know he 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 talks about the, being for the small guy, and it's complete bullshit, which is become right you flash cash in front of like certain people yeah and they completely out man well no. like, rich is, rich is the king of the fucking shells i'm declaring it now right king of the <laughs> shells huh <laughs> he's the fucking king of the shells long live the king that's fucking rich Excuse <laughs> my rant, but it's true it's fucking true and i unsubscribe to the guy i've been subscribed to the guy for the longest compared to any other youtuber he he was absolutely one of the longest guys I'll subscribe to, and, and and for him to do this, it, it just it completely pisses me off, man. And I think I was justified by unsubscribing to that guy because, you know, he's not congruent congruent with the uh, the message that he wants to convey to his users. Right, right? totally. Thing, and then you you turn around and do another thing, you sell out, man. But Tommy spewed bullshit. Rich didn't call him on anything through his interviews, too. Yeah, and I definitely first... took an issue. Okay, yeah. well, for, okay, two things. So first of all, too much. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> uh, so there's two things. One is like he's totally like shilling. Like every single video he posts now, there's always like a, a commercial at the start, right? And it's like uh, the one that was always in my face all the time was like the Satisfy uh, Switch Grip. And there was a couple yeah, other ones the, too, right? VPN. Yeah, everybody's got the VPN thing going on. <laughs> yeah, and the VPN, right? Oh, everyone's tracking your every move. And then... I mean, it's coming after you. <laughs> yeah. Get a VPN. <laughs> and then uh, he totally, he totally did not question anything Tommy had to say. So, I mean, let's get into, like, a lot of what Tommy had to say during that interview, and we can kind of discuss some points there, right? Because there was quite a bit said during that interview, and uh, there, was a, there was some strange tone, I would say, in that interview where Tommy went on a few rants about elitists, and you could hear, like, in the tone of his voice, like, he was looking down on people, right? Like, he, like he's some genius, right? And then on Rich, top of Rich wasn't trying to calm him down, which was weird, right? When we've seen we've seen other smaller YouTubers try to like calm him down and reason with him a bit, right? And he he, he like it's a, it's like a it's like a weird thing, right? It, it looks like he's paid off, right? Yeah, sort of. It sort of does. It's all it's hard to know for sure, right? And it's it's one of those things. Well, we'll probably never know, but I mean, definitely like Rich essentially let him preach to his audience but i mean i i watched that video the boat. yeah he was steering the boat right yeah. yeah i watched that video and if you watch the chat the chat was all like lol and they they weren't buying into yeah. anything tommy had to say at all <laughs> the first interview that was the, that was comedy gold the four, first one right and then he does a redo interview because they're like we gotta scratch that out we gotta we gotta like we gotta you know erase that from the internet that interview right yeah <laughs> Because, Rich, because of the whole hoodie thing, right? Rich uploads so much so much content, so many videos. And uh, the way the YouTube algorithm works, right, is, like, usually people just look for the newest stuff, right? So so those older videos, right, unless you go back and look through them or look for them, like, it, get, it gets pretty much not scrubbed off the internet unless they delete it. But it, it, gets, it gets washed out, right? It gets... Gets washed, washed away. And, That's uh, true. That's it's, true. Yeah. It, it's like uh, people won't know about it unless other YouTubers point this out or other people on social media. They won't know about oh, oh that old interview, right? The, the the first interview, you know that that was the key interview. You know, not not the stage second one. That one was more stage, right? Let's let's see, because Rich was like oh triggered and say i'm not a solo and then the second interview right the redo interview they put the that coupon code right tom's do tom's doing like a 20 percent inter or 20 percent off coupon code let, let me ask you this this is another tangent that i gotta go off about what new console right because tommy's considering this a new co console what new console gives a 20 percent discount code right off the bat yeah you know, none for none the, right i joke man <laughs> 20% off's a huge deal, man. Like I'm, I'm, I wonder whether yeah. that was actually legit. I didn't even try. 
right? But I I wonder whether that's legit or if they were trolling. I don't I don't even know. That's a it's a good question. They're, they're doing a, yeah, they're doing a, a, like that. That seems like it was real because Bridge put it in inter, he put in videos, follow up videos, right? I didn't subscribe to him, but I, I I checked out two of his uploads after that, and he, he was doing live streams with those uploads, right? And uh, he he put in those live streams the code, so he was shilling even after the fact when he was doing live streams, just general talk with his audience. You know, he was still putting that coupon code in there the week that they're doing running that promotion. So I I believe absolutely without a doubt that actual discount code was legit. Yeah, yeah. No, I I believe you. I believe you. And, and and the thing I wanted to point out also about the, the coupon code I am a shell right. It, it's like they're trying to own the word. And and with with that said, right, Rich was trying to own a word with Tommy. They're trying to own the word, thinking that oh this, this is funny, right? We we could own it, and then you know these haters won't won't use the word anymore. No, that's not how it works, man. You can't own a word and expect you know you can't expect to own a own a word and, and expect it to work for you the same way it works for a, a culture, right? You yeah, can't it's do completely that, completely it, different. It, it doesn't, it, that that psychology doesn't fucking work the same way, man. <laughs> and they're trying to own the word "chill" when it's in the fucking English language dictionary. And and guess guess what, right? The word "chill" isn't a bad word. So your little plan didn't fucking work. If you guys are listening right now, it's yeah. hilarious, man. <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, they're not gonna listen to anything we have to say. Tommy's so far up his own butt and. Those rich, <laughs> they're not going to listen to anything we have to say here. But I mean, uh, let's try to bring it back to Tommy actually now. So he's he's uh, he's trying. I don't know if you've watched any of the Intellivision videos. I assume you've seen some at least. And one of the things he's pushing hard, right, is his credentials. So he did uh, this TV show, Electric Playground. And then he did, uh, what else did he do? He did the Video Games Live concerts. And he worked on some old Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo stuff where he did the music composition. And another thing is he always brags about how uh, he's worked on the most games, right? I don't know whether you you, I, you saw the video. I don't think that's true, yeah. He yeah, says I, that he's I, I worked on the most. That, yeah. He he said he's that's worked on the most video games, right? He said he's worked on that, the most I, video games, yeah. and he her, holds the Guinness World Record for the most video games. And to that, I'd have to say, well, a lot of those titles are from the pre two thousands era, first of all. Yeah. And and secondly, like, um, mu music composition is sort of like voice acting in a way where it's easy to work on like a ton of titles because you're not the person sitting there writing the code, right? Tommy wasn't the programmer on those titles. He was composing the music. So it's easy to work on like a hundred different games when you're not programming them, right? So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't count that as an actual, like, uh, like, like, like straight game development, uh, credential like like i don't know right no no i'm not no. using the correct i'm not using the correct words but it's not the same level pretty much as you're you're making the game right you're you're sort of like a additional work right yeah i mean uh, music is crucial there's a lot of great there's a lot of good games out there with uh fantastic music and music makes a big difference i mean no one's gonna argue that but and it, it's not easy making music too right it's not easy no it's like, not i'll give them that and the thing is, right? The the first the first video that I, I was I was in I was a, it was this like random YouTuber, right? They I, I I went into the chat room, and this wasn't the first Tommy interview I watched, but I, I actually chimed in on this one. And this were my first video because I, I took uh, recordings, right, and uh, screen captures of that. And that's when he had a blow. When he actually like attacked me personally. And if you look at the chat log from that. You'll see that I I praised him for being a good musician at that point, right? I I I gave the guy credit, but I was trying to like I was trying to not criticize 
the, the fact that he's launching it like during a, a bad time. But I was trying to point to him that you could you could you know sort of uh, extend it right, or you could delay it more. That's better to do. But he he didn't he didn't see or he didn't acknowledge the fact that I praised him first. He just focused in on uh, the criticism, man, and he freaked out. He had like a blowout, right? He spazzed out on me for no reason. And and he, what his main focus should be is that he's a musician, not a he's not a game designer or a hardware designer. Yeah, he's not he's not a programmer. He's not a designer, and he uh, well two things there. First of all, to finish my thought from earlier is yeah, he, is, should, he should boast, boast about working he, on the most games though. It's he, should, he, sh he really shouldn't. First of all, the console should sell itself. You don't see like Nintendo or Sony or even Microsoft being like, we have 600 years of t talent. You know, none of those co yeah, they, companies they have to do they that. Cool that. They, they don't even, they don't even put the console first, right? They're more like, here are the games you have to buy our console in order to play them, right? Whereas in television seems to be like, hey, don't worry about the games. Don't worry about the console. Just worry about the fact that we have this incredible team of people who have been retired for a while, and we're Football gonna make an insanely paper, good yeah. uh, console, I guess, right? Yeah, they're, they're blowing a lot of hot air, right, with their credentials, right? Uh, that doesn't in the real world that doesn't apply anymore, right? To anybody that's a millennial that's hearing, and uh, I don't know, but I don't know your age, Kev, but uh, yeah, I'm a millennial, right? I'm in my 30s, and like like that that doesn't count for worth shit, you know? Whether you have a lot of experience or or no experience, it it just matters. Like it, it, everything is really competitive nowadays. It, it just matters what you do in the present, right? Not what you've done in the past anymore. Right? Yeah, exactly. No, I and I like, agree like, with you. Thing, right? Your point with uh, they're focusing on the hardware, right? Uh, not not completely because we touched just just a, a couple of minutes ago. We touched about the, how the hardware is not completely transparent, right? They didn't they didn't actually give the full, you know, transparency on their website. Like I pointed out on my, one of my videos, they didn't say what what board they're using, right? The, the specs right. are up. The specs are up. But I had to I had to do some like internet sleuthing to to find to find out what the, the board they're using was, right? And and uh, it, it's it's like they're not they're not being like completely transparent with the hardware specs, but they're focusing on the hardware, like you said. And it's sort of uh, it's it's like another dated thing with the '90s, right? The '90s, you have seen all the like the the rises and falls of all these different consoles, right? Like the the Commodore CD32, uh, Atari Jaguar, right? They came and went. The, the what Panasonic 3DO, it yep. came and went. There's uh, Sega CD like crashed and burned, and Sega 32X crashed and burned. Saturn too. <laughs> and the Saturn, uh, this N64 uh, DD that that got delayed. Great, right? it got developed in uh, '98, and it, it it didn't even come out in North America, right? Because uh, because yeah, it, it, that got delayed big time. And all, all these consoles, yeah, the Saturn the, and stuff, they, they all just crashed and burned. But in the 90s, they're big on, like, hardware, like, pushing pushing the amount of bits that are in the system, uh, all these all these features and stuff. When, when you know, like, it, it took, like, maybe, uh, uh, like, two decades for the industry to realize the games matter the most, right? The games. They do. They do. And uh, so you've heard, you've heard that Tommy's always saying, uh... He wants to be like the Wii, right? But the Wii's main appeal was it had some good games, right? I mean, there was a lot of shovelware there yeah. too. No, no argument. But there was there was like uh, Mario Galaxy. It it there was uh, the Wii Sports. There was Paper Mario. There was quite a few good games there, right? Mario Party as well as it had backwards compatibility with all of the GameCube stuff. Now, that's all software that pushed the sale of the hardware. You know what I'm trying to say? Rather than trying to sell the hardware... Oh, yeah. For sure. Because, I mean, if you look at the launch lineup, it's like, well, where is, where is the... Uh, where's the software? I mean, even the Wii, right? The Wii launched didn't with... They, they, yeah. The Wii launched with Wii Sports, right? We launched with Wii Sports, and everyone with, loved uh, it. Zelda game? I thought, yes. Did they launch 
Twilight Princess? Yes. Does, didn't Twilight was it Twilight Princess? Did it come out at, at the end of the GameCube and the Wii start? Was that was that one of those games, or was it just the Wii? Or no, uh, no, uh, it bridged no, over Twilight the Princess. two. No, and, it was and, it uh, was Twilight Princess. It was Twilight Princess. Did Twilight Princess only have the motion control too? So they they did a launch game and a Zelda game with their main feature, the motion controls, that weren't a big thing for any other console. That's why the Wii was like it was unprecedented, right? It was it was like a one of a kind, like innovative system, right? Right. Yeah. And it was cost friendly. It was cost friendly compared to the the PS3, right? <laughs> I remember when the PS3 came out, I was like, I can't afford this fucking thing. I'm like. Like I can't, I I could buy it, but I'd be tight on money, right? Uh, I like I couldn't afford it from like 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 a monthly like uh on an earnings standpoint, right? Because it's it's like a lavish to to me, like because as a middle class guy, I'd be it's like a lavish kind of uh, thing to buy. Yeah, right? yeah, I think it came out at what was it? Was it five hundred or uh, six hundred dollars? It was it was like five hundred uh, US and like it was six hundred Canadian dollars. Okay, there like you there like you go, that. right? And yeah. I'm pretty sure the Wii came in around two fifty or something like that. So it was it was pretty reasonable in comparison to the Xbox and the uh, and the, uh, the PS3, right? And no, I didn't I didn't learn the the Wii having GameCube hardware in it <laughs> until like later on, like after it was probably done. I didn't I didn't know that fact, which is interesting in itself, right? And to, to take a company, you know, that let's say the GameCube, they lost. They lost the GameCube era. They lost the Nintendo 64 era, right? Nintendo. Yep. They, they lost those gaming eras. And uh, for them to come out in a, a generation where power was stacked upon them, uh, what you had, right? What your hardware had against them. And for them to do that, they, they pretty much, David and Goliath, the hell out of Sony and Xbox or they ab- Microsoft, right? They absolutely did. But a big part yes. of that was the titles yeah. behind it, right? I mean, first of all, their Nintendo, yeah. you know, the IP, like, yeah, they had they had like multiple things that we've already pointed out that just yeah. went in their favor, right? So, so they, when you compare they, that to the Intellivision Amico now, right? And you're trying, yeah. Tommy wants to say that the Intellivision Amico is going to be the Wii of this generation. Well, yeah. The Wii had a ton of good software. Now, what does the Amico have, right? I mean, I can read you off the launch titles, which is Cornhole, uh, some dice game. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, I, I'm from Canada, right? We don't call it Cornhole. It, it sounds kind of weird, and I have to laugh every time I hear that title, Cornhole, because we call it Beanbag Toss, right? Bean, That's what okay. we call it here. <laughs> Okay, so sorry, be- go on, go on. I didn't mean to interrupt you there. So there, okay, so beanbag toss, right? Then we've got uh, a dice game. We've got asteroids, or no, sorry, it's Astro Smash. We've got Shark Shark, and I don't know what else. Is is there anything else? I'm pretty sure that's it. There's one Did more you say title. Evil Knievel? Oh, Did you see uh, Evil Knievel, right? Evil yeah, Knievel. So- <laughs> I don't. Yeah, well, th- that's that's the main point, Ray. Um, I'm not using this example like that. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't point this out. Where uh, Pat the Idiot Punk did, and uh, that's the whole thing we could talk about, like Pat in himself. But he was like the mostly, he was he, he's not the mostly critical person. I would say I, I would say I, I'm probably the most critical person, but I'm not very known, right, for this thing, like adv- or advertising against, uh, adv- uh, advocating against this thing. I mean. Yeah, uh, he, he, like Pat pointed out, pretty much uh, the Evil Can Evil game. It's on the Android shop, and he he loaded up like a screenshot of it. And I I actually verified his, you know, what he pointed out. I verified it for myself. Right, I didn't just take Pat on his word, even though I sus or subscribed to Pat. I didn't I didn't take him on his word. I looked it up, and that game's that's the old game, a mobile game from like years ago. That's on the Android. Yeah, store. I you think it's from it. 2016 or something. It's it's, it's like quite a, old. I think it's like a dollar or two. So is, is Tommy going to have that on his eShop, right? His Amico shop that he's calling it. He's going to have it for like the same price, like because uh, he's dealing with the same developer, right? And, it's, and they're porting it out, like to the Amico. Yeah, uh, I forgot the name of the company, the dev, the developer, but 
it's 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 kind of weird, right? It's not an original game, and it's not a bad thing. He's using an older game to to launch with because other consoles have uh, done that before, right? But the, to try to come off like uh, it's a unique game, he's see, he's saying that like if he's going to have just original games, right? He's going to release them once a week, just just to make make the game like. Uh, get enough exposure he's going to release it one, or one game a week to give enough exposure to the developer in the game yep and, and, the, and the fact that he's doing that it, it's not a terrible idea right it, it's 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 good if the developer wants to you know get get his game promoted right it's not getting like he's arguing that uh it gets washed like games get washed away with uh, the nintendo switch shop yeah yeah i guess that's that's a library right that's a that's a it, somewhat fair argument because yeah uh games do get lost in the eShop. the other side of it is you're only going to get 52 games a year right if if he's only doing one title a week that's only 52 a year oh yeah and, and uh that's that's pretty weak in itself if the game's the old mobile game that's getting reported right that's the yeah. That's the other side to it, like you said. If it's a report, and he's saying that if the games are, are reports or, or ported onto the Miko, he's saying that they don't have unique features making the game unique to the system. But it's not really unique. Even it, like what it, it, it's controlled with like a, a mobile c controller right, with his wheel, his wheel controller, the television controller. That doesn't yes. make it just because it's motion controls. That doesn't make uh, the Evil Knievel game anything unique it doesn't yeah <laughs> if, if anything it probably makes it more annoying to control with i i i just i don't see that game being easy to control on there uh, unless you can control it directly on the phone but then you're not looking at your tv screen right it turns into like a wii u situation where you're staring at the the controller the most most of the time right to control certain games and that that's kind of awkward and that's that's where the wii u kind of fell short with the awkwardness with people can't look at two screens at once it's it's kind of hard unless the like unless you look at the ds right the ds is like you got two screens at once but you sort of have to flip your your eyes like you only have two sets of eyes right <laughs> I, I don't know how, how you how else to explain it unless you've played like the, you played games on the ds or the wii u yeah yeah but, well the the ds has the two screens lined up almost perfectly whereas the wii u you, you'd have to like look down at your lap and then look up at the screen right you're sort of glaring over the screens too on the DS, right? I, I have a DS right now. I I played on it a couple of times, and uh, I'm not I'm not a huge DS fan, but I, I I like the I like the handheld. I like it. It's just it's not a thing that I really got into because it's kind of kind of awkward, right, to play with two screens. That's just me. If if you got to control certain games on the Miko the same way. I don't see how they could be like a unique and enjoyable experience, right? Like he's promoting that right now. Right. So yeah, the the evil can evil though. It's it's like a good example of what could go terribly wrong with the Miko. But he has he has other games. Uh, what's that dungeon game that he's going to come out with? The oh, Man? uh, ooh. uh, Cloudy Mountain. That's the one. So. This is before I I put out a video of Tommy. This is sort of like uh, when I was told about this this whole thing, and when I heard about it with Pat Pat Nian talking about it, because I think it was Pat Nian that th they first caught me onto this. And then then some of my friends talked to me about the whole Miko thing because a lot of my close friends are are gamers also, and and the fact that you look at that game right, you're like this this game could actually work for the Miko right. And this is before I was like really critical about the Miko, or, or, or like skeptical in any kind of way. I was like, "Hey, that thing could actually work for them. That game." And they're and they're not launching with that game, right? So that is a title that could draw people in, and they're not launching with that title. Along with they're not launching with uh, what's his premier title that he will never stop talking about. Earth, Earth gym even yes. though there's no screenshots of it yet <laughs> yes so all there game, is game is captured. uh is that animation like, of earthworm jim running right so um first he had, he had a 
he had a picture of Earthworm Jim, and then he he did a little animation thing. <laughs> but that that's really not enough. And from what I've heard, that game is coming in 2021. So that's a long way away, and and later in so, 2021. So you got Cloudy Mountain, right? Let, let's focus on like the good games that potentially could be on this thing, okay? Because we want to try to be fair here. Now, I I've, I swear to God, I've I've tried my my best to be fair with this thing, right? It's just the whole the whole thing around it. It it, it rubs me the wrong way because of the way they're treating gamers, right? They're yeah. they're treating gamers like in, in with a lot of disrespect. Not only Tommy, right? Not not from a a corporate corporate like stance, but, but the community, the the whole television community, even uh, Atari fanboys that like this thing too because there's there's like the one guy uh who keeps trolling my channel atari creep he posts like the most ridiculous stuff like uh, like in my comments section th this guy but you know like uh, atari it's, creep it's, yeah like, i've seen i've seen atari creep stuff and i mean that guy's that guy's a joke in of of himself right <laughs> i mean he he's he's all you can really say to atari creep is like okay boomer right it's like okay uh, Whatever, whatever you say, Boomer. You know, uh, there's no, there's no talking to him. He's, he's nuts. I've had several exchanges with that guy where I was like, dude, like, you're making fun of, you know, people or, or you know, like throwing out homosexual slanders and stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, you can't talk like that in this era. And he's just like grew off it's like, so okay much. okay well if if tommy yeah. wants that guy to be one of his cheerleaders then i mean that says a lot about that generation or at least where tommy's mindset is where he thinks this this guy should be a cheerleader and tommy if tommy also extended an invitation to this guy to be involved in the development of the et game for the intellivision amico if conditional on if he can get the license so i mean he, he obviously holds atari creep in very high regard and atari creep is well he's a creep i guess i'll, I'll use the example right uh like like I was, I was talking previously how i used to work in the security industry um, with, with anything you're looking into you investigate into some people can be determined, right? When I'm 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 doing an investigation, you can be determined to be. You've heard this line before: guilty by association, right? Because yeah. Tommy, as a CEO of a company, right, does he want to be guilty by association? Because let, let's okay in a court of law, right? Court of law, like there's different levels of of uh, there's a court of law and the court of opinion, right? It, it doesn't matter in a court of law if he's not guilty of something, but in society, if you're guilty by association, it, it's it's hard to sell your product. On, it mean it means a lot with uh, the Twitter outrage and the cancel culture, right? I mean, it means a lot. Not, not only not, not only those guys, right? Those, those weirdos, <laughs> you know, like because they are weird, man. Like the one guy used like a, a genitalia analogy with me. To explain something to me and he's like he's like uh listen that you you know shut your uh, you know pee hole i'm gonna just use that term and i'm just like what the hell like it's like on baltimore right the guy didn't have to like go off on me like that in a comment section on one of my videos today but this is a target creep i'm talking about and, Re really this was today Okay. Yeah, this is today. This is today, you know, this isn't like last week. The, the guy's the guy's still going on my channel, and I, I I'll admit, like, I'm not hiding anything. I delete comments on there if they're like they're outrageous, right? But if if they're saying to me, right, if they explain to me, if they don't say, if they say, hey, you're you're lying, you're full of shit, and they give me an explanation, right, I'll keep their comment on there, right? I will delete. When they have justified critical comments about my videos, I'll leave that up there. But if they say, oh, you're a liar, fuck you, you dickhole, this and that, because that's what they're saying to me, man, in so many words. They're saying they're using those exact terms with me, and all these, all, all this nonsense of, of, like, all this language that's unnecessary, right? But that, that's what you're going to get with yeah. that generation, though, because, uh, I mean, you're even, talking about, even, like, yeah. our father's even generation. If, Oh yeah, oh yeah, it, yeah. My dad's generation's like about that too, man. 
like even if you uh, blast me, right? You blast me or criticize me with something. Even if you curse at me, like you use uh, vulgar language with, with me in my comments section, th that's fine. That's fine. But explain yourself. If you don't explain yourself, I'm deleting that fucking bullshit because it's just personal attacks. Like one guy, he commented about uh, the way I talk or in my videos. You see me stutter a lot or I, I say a lot and stuff. I'm not hiding that. I'm not hiding that. Yeah, I, I, have, I, have, I have issues talking when I'm recording video, you know. But who doesn't, right? Most people do, yeah. right? And it's, it's very easy to hide behind, uh, let's just say, uh, a, a username online and be critical of people. I mean, you watch the top YouTubers like Philip DeFranco, for example. Yeah. You actually watch those videos, you'll see that that guy has a lot of hard cuts because he's cutting out all of the ums and uhs and silent moments where he's trying to gather his thoughts, right? Because, because it's not entertaining, right? Essentially, that's it. But yeah. I mean, let's we're getting on sort of a tangent about Atari Creep here, so let's try to bring it back to uh, the Amico. And uh, how how do you how how do you feel? Well, I don't know. Do you know any other games before I move on to our next topic here? Are there any other games that stand out to you? Uh, Moon Patrol is that the, the other one? Yes. Yes. So, so when when people were watching that preview video that Tommy put out, uh, I, I got I got a lot of feedback and uh, I heard I heard from other people that hey that that game looks like a lot of fun and th that's a television game right? Yeah, um, I think it's an Atari game actually. It's from the Atari Twenty Six Hundred or something. It's an Atari game. Yeah. See, I I didn't grow up with the first or second generation consoles. But I, I thought, hey, maybe as a, a ritual ga gamer, maybe I should get into those games, right? Give them a chance. And uh, I, I, I really, I never really thought about getting into it after, like, you know, watching videos and gameplay and stuff. It's, to, to me, it, it's something that uh, I, I kind of have to play at somebody else's house, right? I have to, tr uh, like, I don't want to buy into it without trying it, you know? That's yeah. somebody else's place or through through a friend, right? And uh, it, it's it's really like a, it's it's a different experience, right? So to dredge this this whole thing from the past and and re re uh, what's the word reinvigorate it now, it's kind of been like years, right? It's been a span of yeah, it's, how many years? Forty years, probably. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's a long time to. Uh, you know, dig up old grave, the television grave. Drag that you television know. out of the freaking, uh, yeah. Drag that yeah. skeleton out. <laughs> oh, 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 Put it in a wheelchair grave. and wheel it out. <laughs> it comes back to life. Remember, Frank, it's time you back <laughs> to life with some uh, Android-based or uh, Android-based device, you know. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what they're doing, right? That's what they're doing. And, and like, anybody that's hearing me out right now, if if... Even if you don't like what I'm saying, right? It's it's fact. I'm not say, I'm not making shit up. I'm not sensationalizing stuff like the, uh, the television CEO is. I'm not doing any of that. Th these are facts. Oh yeah, there's all mind. sorts of stuff we could talk about. Sensationalist. So so, so keep in mind, right? I, I I know I'm reiterating this. I'm reiterating this because you guys have to understand. If you want to leave cri uh, critical comments in my comment section. Make sure you explain yourself before you tell me to go fuck myself. <laughs> you know? yeah. make, make sure you do that. That's a caveat in my channel. Because the only reason I even started deleting any any comments in my section is because I started posting on Reddit. And guess what the television fans started doing? Deleting my uh, video posts. Hey, you, how, how is it a fair open uh, community discussion if you guys keep deleting my Yeah, my it's, comments, it's like, right? uh, what, what, so... What they're looking for, right, is they're looking for an echo chamber, basically, where everyone is agreeing, right? They don't want to hear any side, oh, yeah. any outside input uh, at all. They don't want to hear anyone who says, you know, maybe this isn't the greatest idea or, you know, maybe there are some good ideas and some bad ideas here. Instead, they just want to hear, this is the greatest thing ever. This is the greatest thing on the planet. And... You know, this is going to beat out all the other consoles. This this is going to be the new Wii. This is going to be Wii, <laughs> Wii 2.0. And it's like, first of all, no, it's not. And, I mean, there's a whole other discussion we can have there. But, I mean, it's like there's no way 
you're going to achieve the success of the Wii. Like, the Wii was like uh, that old phrase of, you know, getting lightning in a bottle. Something that is literally, like, impossible. It hit at the right well, time. Well said, Kevin. Yeah. Well, you know, well said, Kevin. Yeah. yeah. It's basically like it came at the right time and, like, rejuvenated the market when people didn't think about motion controls, right? At all. Yeah. And, oh. and and it was like, whoa, this is so interesting and unique and cool. And then you saw other people, you know, there was the PlayStation Move and there was the Microsoft Connect, and they both tried to copy the Wii. And they had titles behind them, including like Dragon Ball, a hugely popular franchise, and other huge franchises, and they could not make it work like Nintendo could. So what what about Cornhole or... Uh, the dice game is gonna compete, you know, with what Nintendo could do with it. Yeah, I, I don't understand it. Yeah, it's 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 crazy the mentality behind it, right? You're not reinventing the wheel, and uh, like, like you they, said, they with they the they sort of think they do. The other console manufacturers with more money than Nintendo, you know, they couldn't even they couldn't reinvent. Or they could they could use the same idea and, and run with it. They could they couldn't do the same thing. They could repeat that success essentially. And, yeah. and by not being able to repeat that success by by using the same formula with their own propri proprietary stuff like the Connect, uh, any like the PlayStation motion controls, like they could re reestablish the same thing. So. You know, like what what makes Tommy special? What makes the Miko special? <laughs> Not well. Essentially, the only thing he has are are the titles, right? That's what makes him yep. unique, I guess. Is he has those titles, but those titles are all you know in their grave. You're digging them up and pulling them out and being like, we've got Moon Patrol, and it's like, okay, well maybe my dad knows Moon Patrol. Uh, but even then, my dad, my dad is a gamer, okay? He's 65. He knows how to use a dual shock. Yeah. He knows how to use a, a rare, dual shock. He's a rare guy for his time, right? He's a rare guy for his time. Like, I would say any of these first, uh, uh, first gen or second gen gamers, right, that got into gaming before we did, I, I would say, honestly, like, these guys are very rare for their time. Because, yeah. uh, like like society, right? We'll give you. A, I'll give you a quick uh, sociological uh, so, so, uh, sociological uh, lesson here. Um, at the time, right, nerds were very. Uh, it, it was like, it was it was kind of like uh, in society, nerds were sort of like uh, <laughs> looked down upon, right? They're like looked down upon. So these guys, essentially, for that time period, they were considered nerds, right? The word right. nerd doesn't mean it doesn't hold any stigma or any 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 uh weight nowadays right any tom dick and harry or uh, uh i don't know kusanagi every, everybody claims they're a nerd now i'm a nerd you know it doesn't mean jack shit all right now we're living in an information age right now and guess what a lot of people whether they're intelligent in some ways they're intelligent uh, they're intelligent in other ways right right so yeah to associate gaming with uh you know, being being a nerd doesn't hold any weight anymore. That argument does. But these guys, they're like, they're they're like, uh, yeah, they're the founders of gaming. You know, uh, founding gamers, right? Or they're they're the first guys to get into it. The OGs, I suppose, right? Yeah. But they, my, uh, my, but my dad, who's the same age, he wasn't a nerd. He wasn't a nerd, and he he, he didn't he didn't he didn't pick up any technology, right? Not until like the millennium. After maybe I don't know when the guy actually got into technology, but he's he's he was the most up till like recently. He's the most computer illiterate. Uh, he didn't he didn't even get a cell phone till like a couple of years ago, man. Like uh, you, you gotta understand, a lot of people from that time did, were into game gaming or gaming consoles. Oh, so totally. that's where I went off. Yeah. No, I I think that's a that's a fair point. Uh, there's two there's two jump off points from there, which is one, uh, you know the whole stigma around being a nerd, 
And if you watch a lot of the promotional material from Tommy, he kind of is leaning into that, like, material and saying comments like, you know, uh, gaming has become like this solo experience and there's all these, you know, weirdos with their headsets on and their dark yeah, well, basement it's, rooms it's, yeah. playing video games. Leaders, right? Yeah, it ties into the whole elitist thing. He thinks yeah. that everybody is like that. And it, he's using the age-old argument that they did back in his day. Where they actually, he probably got picked on in school for being into gaming. Yeah. Or, or, or maybe he was in the choir, right? Maybe he was in his high school choir or his school choir. And uh, oh, who you know, knows? Choir, uh, I know, I know. My high school, right? I know when I went to high school, choir people and stage crew guys were picked on too. Like, like they, that old mentality still carried on to a certain point, and. Uh, it's kind of weird that he's using that argument when he might have been. I'm only guessing here, right? I'm not. I'm not saying this was what happened with the guy, but like, uh, it's kind of weird that he's using that argument when he shouldn't have any stigma around a uh, a product for sure. Using that old age argument, especially when the guy, right? He comes off like he when he does interviews, right? They're so incongruent, right? His interviews, it's so so weird to listen into because he doesn't stay like stable it's not stable it's not like a stable message and and, and the way he talks right the, the way he he goes about his narrative doesn't say stay congruent because if he says that he's all about positivity and then you know uh he has like a, a fucking bipolar moment like uh, 10 minutes later he goes freaks out on people in the chat room what, what yeah, the hell's yeah. all that about that <laughs> I, I, I'm, 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 I'm a lovable guy. Uh, you know, if me and my wife, uh, these are quotes from him, right? I, I got him, I got him recorded in my videos, right? Uh, me and my wife, we, we see, if we see ants on the ground, we won't step on them. You know, we, we're compassionate people. And then he freaks out like he has a bipolar moment later on in the video. <laughs> yeah, and he'll be cussing you out, right? <laughs> you see what I mean, man? You got to stay congruent with, with your ideology and your mentality. Because if you don't, you come off like a snake oil salesman like he is right now. You come off like you're, you're a fucking swindler, like an e-grifter and an e-beggar. Like... That that's that's where that's where we caught him. That's where we caught him. And I, I say to that, gotcha, bitch. I got gotcha. you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going off of that tangent, man. But, <laughs> dude, it's true. It's true, man. You if you, you and Tommy that, do not get along. So okay, yeah, true, so let's yeah, let's yeah, bring it back true, to yeah. uh, old people again, right? Older, yeah, yeah. the older, the boomer generation, let's call them. Boomers. <laughs> okay, boomer. Boomers. Zoomers, Zoomers, he's a Zoomer. Because he, he, he had one interview that was weird. He's like, uh, they think I'm a boomer, Rich. And then Rich from Rebutech USA, he's like, yeah, I'm not a boomer either. It, it's like, you're still with old ideology, man. You guys got to yeah, uh, Well, boom, boomer, the, the idea of boomer, I, I feel like... You know, the real boomers out there really struggle with this whole idea of the meme behind OK Boomer, right? Which is not, you know, that you are a boomer like, you know, baby boomers, but more so that you're unwilling to open your mind at all to anything outside of what you learned during your generation. It's like... Okay, I mean, yeah, now yeah. I'm going to go on a whole tangent, but there's this whole idea of every generation yeah. thinks the generation under them was stupid and the generation before them was stupid and that their generation is perfect or not perfect, but pretty damn good, right? And then the next generation comes and they think the generation before them is stupid and the generation after them is stupid. And, and it just, yeah, goes, I, it's I, an endless cycle, right? Yeah, it's that entitlement thing, right? Right. So so that, that's that's the meme better. boomer. That's the meme okay boomer. But you know, Rich I mean, you're, you're and Tommy right. yeah. they don't get it, right? Cuz they're thinking like, "Oh, baby boomer. I'm not a baby boomer." It's like that's not what the meme is about. The meme is not about baby boomer. It's about the mindset. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, it's it's like if if you don't get what the times, you get left behind. That's that's the old saying. That that's the Am that's right? absolutely yeah. the truth. So to, yeah. so to come back to the whole boomer thing, right? Tommy wants to market this system as uh, you're able to have your four-year-old play against your 65-year-old grandfather. I mean, 
you really like yeah. that was something that we pulled off and was magical but i mean on the average that's not something that any console has really been successful at do you one see guy, that working I, I read a comment right one guy used uh he used the wii right but this guy he made the best analogy that i've seen compared to the wii and the miko he's he he pretty much said the we came out at a certain point of time, right? And it filled a void because mobile devices weren't like really big at that time. And in like the twenty, like when did the Wii come out? Like twenty ten or something like that? Around that time? Uh, no, even earlier. I think two thousand and six. So, so for me, uh, because I only got my like like a, I'm going to sound like a boomer right now, <laughs> right? Uh, for 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 years, right? Leading up to when uh, smartphones came out, right? S smartphones, I would say they came. They became mainstream, I would say, with Blackberries, Androids, and uh, iPhones and stuff, in in like uh, like ten years ago, 2010, right? Right. So I I finally gave up and I got a I got a cell phone, right? I got a cell phone. My friends were like, hey, my close friends were like, you gotta get a cell phone, Victor. My my family was like, you gotta you gotta get a cell phone, right? You gotta get a cell phone, and and I'm just like, like oh shit, you know. Uh, fuck it. I, I caved, right? I caved because it was like peer pressure. <laughs> a, a, a cell phone or a smartphone? A cell phone. Uh, not, e not even a smartphone, but they, they were out at the time, right? Right. Like, uh, so I caved and I got a cell phone. And uh, like the, the Wii, if it came out before then, like slightly before it, the Wii, it, it had that like sort of – it had that time, the, the way the guy pointed out. It, it, it filled the void where the time were – smart smartphones weren't out yet it, it, it had a uniqueness to it you know so he used that best that was the best analogy i heard you know, they, they came in on the market when that technology wasn't out yet right no i think that's a good point because i mean they had stuff like uh they could track like footsteps you know using the uh what is it called the accelerometer right yeah and now i mean like, accelerometers we, are in your cell we, phone yeah we fit uh, any any kind of motion control games you could, you could do on your cell phone too right now. And all the, all those all those like shovelware games too that you've seen on the Wii, yeah, those were easy to develop. Right, anybody can port those out. Uh, the, the Wii U's full of like all these shovelware games you'd see on like the Google Play Store now. Uh, it's it's hilarious, man. Like uh, straight up, like uh, they 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 got in uh, like at a unique time. And they capitalize big time. But we're we're trying to establish what the Miko has, and we just can't see anything. There's nothing unique about it, you know. No, there it's really no isn't. Reason. I I guess the only thing you could argue is that it has the screen on it, right? But I mean, I've seen the videos where he was talking about being able to play card games. Now the card games, it's like okay, you can play card games, or you could just buy a, a dollar deck of cards right i mean yep. if if one the system is not going to have online but you're going to purchase this system to play card games then i mean well you can you can just buy a deck of cards and not have to buy a 250 dollars system plus the game on top of that right i mean that's just one example i find, I find it really strange right even uh this is before the whole outbreak thing uh, happened. Uh, this this is probably like in February, right? So I went over and I actually played cards with uh, some of my family members, right? So I played I played cards and uh, yeah, we used a deck of cards, right? And uh, they're expensive. They're expensive deck of cards, right? Uh, but what like instead of five dollar deck of cards, uh, we use like uh, fancy poker cards. They're like maybe fifteen bucks or twenty bucks, or whatever, right? Right. But, it, it, it's it'd be weird to substitute that with a screen though like just if you if you ever played cards like i have i'm not a huge like uh, i'm not into poker that much or, or playing card games but it's like a thing i've done with my family over the years right and it, it's it's something that to me it's something uh in, intimate that i do with my family right yeah and it's and tangible the, right because you're holding the cards and it's, and it's, it's like from technology yeah the the even just like the sound of the cards when you like you're flicking them or or flipping through them or shuffling them like there's something enjoyable about doing that that now you're not going to get 
because essentially all you're going to be doing is holding a, a screen, right, or a cell phone essentially, and swiping off the screen the cards you want and the ones you don't want as people go around in a in a circle, you know, playing their cards, their hands, I guess. You, you could even make the same uh, argument in, in terms of uh, the beanbag ba- toss game, uh, cornhole, right? Right. Uh, it, it, you know, like being outside, uh, breathing in fresh air, right? And, and throwing, you know, a beanbag with people like, like, like uh, in, in my city where I live right now, we have, uh, there's only one court that I know of, right? It's for this Italian game. Uh, Tom, uh, Tommy's an Italian. He should know this game. It's called bocce ball. And it, it's, it's sort of like beanbag toss, right? But you throw balls instead. And you, you got to sort of, uh, yeah, you got to sort of throw them a certain way. And it's based off of the distance and the points. Uh, you're getting closer to, to the, the, I think it's a pole that you got to throw it at. Oh, right? yes, or, yes. Or, lawn bowling. Yeah. A lawn bowling, yeah, that's that's the that, that's the English name for it, right? I just know it as bocce ball because uh, other people have told me about that game. But we have an actual court in the city that I'm from, and that's that's like a unique, really unique experience, right? And all these old guys go there because every every week or every day, practically in my city, play because because it's the only place you can go to play that in the city, right? But they're they're doing it one yeah. to get the outing, two yeah. to to like to breathe that fresh air and also to like hang out with their their friends because I'm sure most of them are in retirement and they're doing lawn bowling right or bocce, yeah. whatever right. So it's like okay, yeah, you can't replicate that with uh, a cell phone right. Well, we're just gonna call a spade a spade. The controller is a cell phone with a disc attached at the bottom, right? Yeah, that's so correct. yeah, so uh, you can't really replicate that experience. Right. And even the argument of, yeah. oh, well, you know, um, you're going to be able to do this with with your. Uh, what is it like your five year old? Whatever niece or, or grandchild, you know, if you're 65 years old and you have a grandchild, you could play together lawn bowling via the Miko. It's like, OK. Uh, would you would you do it more than one time? Would you do it one time and be like, yeah, this isn't the same as the real thing? I mean, it's the same goes for like game boards. I mean, yeah, you could probably get game boards on the Amico, like, you know, Monopoly or whatever, but are you going to? And if you do, are you going to play it more than one time? Is it going to be worth the investment of $250 to get that console, then get the games and whatever else, right? It's like, it, uh, yeah, w- w- yeah. We we already talked about how th- the whole age demographic, right? If they're targeting those first and second generation guys, they're the minority in that generation because of the social stigma attached to people that played games at the time. Right, right. But a lot of facts. I, yeah, these are it, facts. Tom Tommy has to be targeting those guys because they're the ones who are in the forums berating people who don't like it. <laughs> Or in even in your comment threads berating you, right? Those those are those guys. So it's like they're having like, uh, they're, they're having like serious like tr- I, I don't like. They're, they're it, so may, maybe they were bullied as a kid, and now it's like now is our chance to bully people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know what's like behind their mindset, right? Because because they're sort of like a, a hive. I don't know if you ever played StarCraft, Kev, but man, like, uh, there's like a hive, right, in in StarCraft uh, with one of the races, and they sort of like you know like a okay, even, like a swarm, with, like a swarm of uh, like, uh, bees, bees. Right? bees, yeah. So so they have that hive uh, cult like mentality going on right now, and it, it, it's it's so bad, man. Like it's it's horrible. Like just me thinking about this, right? I'm like that's gonna be really bad for their mental health, man. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't even know what to say about that. So, I mean, let's come back again to at the same time. Sorry, I'm getting too real here. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, let's come back to the whole idea of Tommy constantly saying in his uh, his uh, promotional videos, as well as in pretty much any time he's criticizing people, he's saying they're elitists, they're hardcore gamers. 
You know, that's not what we're after. We're after the casual gamers. And, you know, the casual gamer, he's talking about people with cell phones, right? He's talking about people with cell phones who buy cell phone games or, or like, download Candy Crush or, you know, those war games and play those and buy microtransactions, right? He's like, if I can get a little cut of that, uh, I can be successful, right? But, I mean, are those, are those people, like, that are casual? Like, I wouldn't even call that casual, because I think casual gamers play the Switch. Lots of casual gamers play the Switch. I, I, my brother, for example, he doesn't have a Switch, but he goes, he, he is, like, super casual, right? But he still went out and he bought an N64, just so he could play Mario Kart with his buddies, right? Drink some beers and play some Mario Kart. I mean, is that a hardcore like gamer? I don't think that's a hardcore gamer at all. That, but that, but that's casual, man. To me, that's casual. But Tommy's definition would be he's a hardcore gamer because Tommy is after these guys <laughs> who play, uh, I don't know, Candy Crush, I guess. You know, uh, and, and I don't it's see crazy, how man. that. I don't see. And I mean, you can give your input here, how they're going to get people who want to play their games on their cell phone to kill time to want to sit in front of a TV, right? Because there's people who boot up like their phones. Like, okay, perfect example. Yeah. Uh, okay. Tons and tons of people got into Pokemon Go, right? Huge, yeah. absolutely sensational I, I hit. Even, I even got suckered into it, right? Yeah. I even got suckered in that one. <laughs> right, right. So there's I, a. I, loved it though. I, I, I don't regret playing it too. I was like, oh yeah, this is fun. Yeah, it it was fun and it it like united the world for like one week, right? <laughs> but I mean, everybody, everybody, their mom, their dad, everybody was in it. Yeah, like everybody played it. Like you could not get a bigger hit than that, right? But I mean, oh, yeah. all those casual gamers, and even the ones who spent money to buy Pokeballs and potions and all that type of stuff, the, only a very tiny percentage of them went on to buy a Switch and buy Pokemon Let's Go and what have you, right? And those people that did were probably yeah. going to buy a Switch anyways. They didn't do it, you know, to sit down, you know, because. They wanted to take that experience and sit down in front of a TV and do it. They're invested into the IP. Like, like I, I grew up, uh, I played, I played the first Pokemon games, right? But the way I got into Pokemon, right? I got into Pokemon through emulation. I didn't, I didn't have a, like I had a Game Boy, but I didn't, I didn't buy the game. And, uh, I, I got into, I found about Pokemon through emulation, right? And, uh, yeah. It, it's, it's like, like everybody got into it one way or another, but I, I watched the the show when I was younger too, the Pokemon show. It aired here on uh, YTV. That was one of the news stations or or the the TV stations. That's how I knew about Pokemon pretty much. Okay. And uh, Tommy doesn't have an IP like that. He doesn't have a Pokemon. He doesn't have a Pokemon, even though Pokemon's like family friendly, man. Pokemon's super family, super family friendly. But my my point though, right? <laughs> is that like that was a game that like hit everybody like even like your moms yeah. were playing pokemon yeah. right people, but but they that weren't even into pokemon got into it but but nintendo could not convert those people who loved pokemon go to come home and play on their tv right because it was yeah. a yeah. nice game that you could play on the go right even, so even so how people... is tommy going yeah. to get those people to be like yo I want to play cornhole on my TV. Yeah, I, I, it's 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 a good analogy, man, to use. Yeah, that's that's the perfect way to put it. Because, yeah, like, like I was saying earlier, uh, guys who play bocce ball, yeah, it's not the same thing. You, some things you can't transition into, uh, like a screen. You, you just can't do it, right? And especially with everything being so screen focused nowadays. Um, yep. It, it's we're we're getting to like this this is another thing I'm getting into getting off into that I shouldn't but we're getting to the point in society where uh, you, you know it, it's becoming like you have you have reality and then you have a like a matrix kind of 
aspect to life. Yeah. That's being online and, and doing everything through a screen now. Like, I spend, like, maybe half of my day, if not more, on a screen. It's crazy, man. Yeah, that I'm that is free, true, and that's free, crazy. Right? That is very yeah. crazy in its own way. But, I mean, that's sort of what society has pushed us towards, right? Because it's and, like... And now, yeah, now with the whole uh, physical distancing thing with COVID-19, uh, corona, yep. it, it's... It's like insane, man. We're living in like the Matrix right now. <laughs> Pretty really, much. You know what I mean, right? Like we can only communicate with each other through phone. But who who the hell calls each other nowadays, man? Nobody, nobody calls it. Everybody like texts us through a screen or or, or goes online, right? Text yeah. your buddy or, or chat with them online via Skype or uh, you know some other service. Yeah, pretty and, much, and, right? It, it's crazy, right? And uh, you have all this stuff that's happening in society right now, and uh, Tommy's got to—he's got to understand, right? E- even though he's trying to push this thing as family friendly, you're—you're you're not pushing it in in the right way with the games that you're doing. You're trying to do this with. Totally, totally. So, so let's talk about the whole family friendly thing. So, uh, a big thing that came up in the Rich the Review Tech. Uh, Rich from Review Tech, sorry. A big thing that came up was the whole uh, censorship, right? And how Tommy (laughs) wants to really censor a lot of things. He doesn't want violent games. And he he used a very, like, like, um, what's the word? Like, nefarious tone, almost, when he was communicating this whole idea of... uh, if you want violence and blood and guts and, you know, like people's heads blowing off and, and pornography and nudity and all this, that go buy a Nintendo switch, right? Because he's going to yeah. censor everything. We've already touched upon how, uh, everybody that's uh, around the television community right now and all these first and second gender gamers, like, uh, they're, they're sort of in that, like, uh, like echo chamber, like you said, where they're, they're sort of mindsets like a cult mentality, right? Yeah. That's what we said. And, uh, I, I just, I, I don't get why he's he's trying to run with this, right? This this seems like a last resort thing. The he's whole safety thing. Sort of, right? Because, and, and if you look back in, on uh, all his previous videos, I'm not sure how many, how much stuff you've watched or read about online to do with this, but he sort of kind of changed his narrative over time, right? First, he was like, uh, "Oh no, I'm just I'm a I'm targeting the millennial moms, right?" He he did that in one interview, yeah. And then he's and then yeah, that's that's who were, or everybody who was uh, interviewing him, asking about. Uh, then he's like, "I'm targeting uh, millennial moms. We have this uh, we have this woman, you know, she used to work at Mattel. She's our marketing." Well, wizard, and she's going. Uh, she's going to market this, and we're going to put it on Ellen and s- sell it like we like hotcakes. <laughs> That's pretty much the gist of the whole spiel, right? Yeah. I mean, no, I. Th- I think. I think he said she worked for uh, Nintendo, actually. But yeah. yeah. Uh, I. Think, I. I don't know if like I think she did work at Mattel too, because because I. Uh, I checked out her LinkedIn page. And, uh, she could have worked at Nintendo. I haven't, I haven't seen her whole profile, but what I seen on there, I, she, she, anyway, she worked for one of those companies. We know that much, right? So, so I mean, the whole safety thing, right? Like he's really pushing hard. The safe, 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 safe. Everything's gonna be safe for kids. And I, I even uh, had an exchange with someone today on Atari Age about the whole safety thing. Right. And this whole like, well, now in Tommy's latest video. So uh, I've I've watched some of the podcasts, including the review tech one and his most recent one. Uh, I forget who it was with now, but he was he was basically saying that uh, even Minecraft is dangerous because when people get online, you know, you don't know who you're going to deal with. Right. And that you could have someone nasty on the other end online. And it's like. Okay, well, I mean that that's a that's a fair point to a degree. The other side of it no, is no. like, I, sorry, I'll sort of interrupt you there. Yeah, uh, for, I've never played Minecraft myself. Uh, 
so there's there's like open chat in in some of Minecraft, right? Or can you, is there different? There's different versions of Minecraft. I know that much. Yeah, there's We're there's talking, there's totally open the chat. PC one. Yeah. Okay. There's definitely open chat, but I mean, if you're if you're trying to block people from having open chat, first of all, Nintendo's already doing that, right? And and secondly, like, well, if you're that concerned, like. If you're targeting a parent who is worried about open chat, well, don't let your kid near your iPad, okay? Because they can get on a chat room in in five seconds flat, all right? Like, like this idea that you know, like if someone gets online via their console, they're they're gonna get into like the the you know the dark the web or something, possible. right? <laughs> the dark web, yeah. It's like okay. <laughs> Order up some slaves and uh, some illegal drugs, right? Yeah. <laughs> right At 3 a.m. Your, your kid's going to the extreme, right? He's going to order, like, illegal weapons and <laughs> all this crazy crap from the dark web. <laughs> so, I mean... Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, I, I re agree. he's really trying to hit that fear thing really hard, right? Where he's, like, inciting it's fear, fear and... Galore, and, yeah. And trying to make parents terrified of these other consoles. I mean, he even went so far as to say something like there was illegal child activities on uh, the Nintendo Switch. And that's like an outrageous claim. I mean... I, I, yeah, I did a video on that. And uh, when, he, when he accused Nintendo of having pedophilia on there, it's like, LOL. They, no, they don't, you, you, you fucking boomer. Like, that's a, that's a straight up <laughs> lie, right? That's a straight up lie, and we know that's a lie because the FBI. I remember that one, man. I was just like, "Is this guy for real, man? He's pulling, he's pulling like the night trap card from the '90s. Remember Sega with night trap? Yeah. The whole censorship. Uh, you know how you know how uh, they have the kangaroo court, the Congress, uh, like hearings in the states. How they they put it like on their their public, their public like television network, right? I forgot a CPIC or something. It's called. Yeah, uh, C-SPAN, I think. Yeah, and, uh, I can't remember. Even the uh, even one of the Godfather movies, right? Uh, the the main character, he he went under a congressional hearing, right? And congressional hearings are pretty much, it's like a it's a, it's a it's like an actual court, but when you have a bunch of uh, congressmen as panelists, right, and other experts, it's kind of it's kind of weird. It's like a kangaroo court, right? Essentially, it's a kangaroo court because. You, you have people that don't know – they don't know anything, right, that's getting told to them. They're not experts, these congressmen. They're po they're career politicians, right? Right, yeah. When you have these people trying to convince you of something that's not – you know, that's not actual facts. They're not it's, educated it's on, right? It's sort of like uh, a year or two that's back when they were grilling uh, Zuckerberg, you know, and all the yeah, politicians well, who yeah. had no clue what they were even saying, right? It's like okay. He's, he's like, no, I'm I'm not I'm not selling people's information, and the, uh, you, you know that 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 in itself is hilarious, right? But not to get off topic, yeah. So he Tommy's pulling the whole uh you know night trap thing that that Nintendo tried to pull, right? He's yeah. pulling like he's trying, trying to pull it on Nintendo, right? Yeah. And I think. <laughs> If, if Nintendo tried to pull it on Sega, right? <laughs> it's like he's trying to create like a, a console war that he can't win at all. Like he doesn't even have like one percent chance of winning a console war against the Nintendo Switch. Like let's let's get real, Tommy. If you're hearing this, get real, man. He has zero chance, and, and like, oh my god, it just blows your mind even just thinking about that, right? Like. <laughs> I know, I know, I do know that he argues that they're going to operate in their own lane and they're not going to be competing with the Switch. But if that is the case, then why does he constantly bring up the Switch? Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. When you said that, right, that they're not competing with each other, right? You know who says that also? Uh, like towards Sony and Microsoft? Nintendo says that all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're not competing against our American competitors. Hi, hi, <laughs> or, or 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 Sony. We we not competing. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I don't mean to sound racist there, but yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, like, yeah, like, like uh, that, that's pretty much what they do, man. You know, the Tunnel says that all the time. We're we're not competing, but they are. That's they the are. Facts. They are because I mean, they wouldn't have done what they did 
with the Switch to get ahead if they weren't failing with the Wii U, right? So they had to come out and do something yeah. totally different, and they succeeded, right? Now, you look at the the Amico, and it's like, ugh, I guess he's doing something different, but it's like, uh, uh, sort of, kind of, like, again, I'm getting off track. I'm getting off track, sorry. But essentially, it's like, where are the games? Ultimately, ultimately, it comes down to where are the games, right? But to come back to the whole sensationalism and the safety thing, I do think that he's, you know, he's he's getting those boomers, right, to be on his side with the whole fear-mongering thing. And it's like, yeah. it's crazy. It's, it's crazy to me, partly because you have uh, a generation who grew up on like rock music and you know they had people who were telling them that rock music was the devil and now it's going to be like they're just repeating the sins of the past yeah. you know yeah, they, literally they, they, the like, mindset the of a boomer right and it's like come on they guys the hippie era. yeah, yeah. That was the whole like uh all these rights movements at the time yeah i, I know i know white history and yeah. it, it's it's hilarious just like you said and they, they're they're sort of like spewing the same bullshit that they didn't like to hear when they were younger. Right, exactly. They're, th that's exactly what they're doing, and it's like, okay, okay, boomer. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> like, okay, whatever, whatever you say. With cults and uh, any kind of propaganda from like crazy political radicals, cult or religious radicals, they try to c control the narrative through propaganda. And that's what he's doing. Tommy's getting free publicity off these guys. They're they're like henchmen. These these uh, fanboys, you know, or shills, whatever. Like whether he pays them or not, he he's he's using other people. I I I could believe that he's maybe he people. pays rich, but I think all yeah. the other ones are just doing it because they're in love with the idea of a resurgence of the Intellivision, which yeah. But like there's there's other like social media people. Uh, one YouTuber, her name's Vera Dark. I came across one of her videos recently, and uh, she she was sent by Tommy a bunch of television swag, right? And what's hilarious is it's just like, oh oh, uh, suddenly she gets she posted on her Twitter too. Suddenly she gets a bunch of sweaters, like she gets a, a television hat or a Running Man T-shirt, and all all this stuff, right? Oh uh, well, that's because he needs. He needs some pretty ladies wearing it. He, he needs like, like, pretty like, ladies wearing yeah. the gear. But but like he, he you know he, he sent he he sent Smash T T uh, uh he gave or he gave him a T or a uh, or T shirt I mean Smash T gave him a T shirt after he rode in Tommy's Ferrari and got all <laughs> up, you know and Smash T T started like criticizing the thing right and, and until Tommy either paid him off or or manipulated him into thinking this thing's a viable platform which i don't think it is right no you know, like like give me a break you know uh, smash gt wouldn't have changed his narrative if he wasn't paid off you know totally i know uh... whether, whether he was paid off monetarily or through through a t-shirt and celebrity status because a lot of these guys right he, tommy's been from the get-go before Tommy's uh, monkey branched to, to bigger social media people, right? Influencers, yeah. you, you would call them. Uh, he's, he's been going on like smaller channels, right? Because that, that's like, that's word of mouth. It's free publicity, right? It's, it's, it's just not more. only free publicity, but it gives validation to those small timers. They're, they're like, Oh, the great Tommy Tillerico, the musician of the the, the century <laughs> in gaming. He 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 likes me. He loves me. And it's just like, come on, man, get get come me, like, like give me a break, man. Come on, honestly, it's it's ridiculous, man. Tom Tommy's <laughs> leveraging those guys for easy PR, right? But like, I mean, like, why why are these guys getting starstruck, right? Uh, wh why do they hold like? a lot of value in what he says and him him acknowledging them right he's to me he's just another uh, person right living in a mansion that loves ferrari rides right <laughs> it, man? no totally <laughs> oh my goodness yeah 
like like uh you know like he tried to he tried to say i remember when uh pat Neen went off on him the first time he's like oh i offered uh you know pat you know i offered him to come out to television uh to television's offices and play it because they live like uh pat lives in san diego and he, uh, tommy lives like a half an hour away apparently so Tommy still goes on about you know how how bad Pat's done him in, and he he keeps going on about that in like every single inter- interview, right? He talks about Pat and the haters, and it's just like Pat's only mentioned you in just just in his videos in Twitter. That's it. Yeah, right? and on and on Twitter he's only combating him and his haters on there, and and yeah, Pat might not be the most. Uh, or, or the best uh, social media person out there, or YouTuber out there, for, from like a, a morale, morale like point of view, but he's not doing what Tommy's doing essentially, which is worse, I think. It, he's not spinning a web of lies. He, he's not changing his narrative all the time. He, he's staying congruent to his message. That's yeah. what Pat's doing. Oh, and and the fact that Tommy says that he offered. To, uh, to let Pat try the prototype, their their prototype uh, banana pie development board, right, with Amico games loaded on there, in his office. That's that's like a bribe to me, man. Honestly, you don't see any other console manufacturer try to pull social media influencers into their headquarters, you know, before the thing's even released, to, to try to win them over, right, and get them to do videos, because the products stand for themselves. Right, PlayStation yeah. stands for itself. The Switch stands for itself. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Xbox people, if you're hearing, yeah, e- even the Xbox stands for itself. Are there Xbox know. people out there? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Hey, man, it's still going. It's, you know, it's I, still, I yeah. credit. <laughs> oh, totally, yeah. It's still it's still uh, alive somehow. It's on life support, but it's still alive. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah, like... Uh, I still respect uh, Microsoft and what they're doing with the Xbox because they're not doing any stuff that Tommy's doing. They're not being shady. They're being transparent with people. They're not trying to buy people before the things come out yet. You know, they're not doing that, man. L- yeah, like companies will do stuff like maybe two two weeks or maybe a month before the console actually launches. Yeah, that's that's because they want to hype up the launch, right? They don't want to hype up the platform before it's even out because it, it will bite them in the ass, man. And, and this is going to bite Tommy in the ass also, man. Come October 10th, right? Like, like I, I don't doubt that this thing's going to come out at this point because they started up a, like an e-begging crowdfunding site. When, when Tommy, I swear to God, right? Tommy, I, he he went on like some interviews, right? He went on some of these guys' YouTube channels and he's like, Oh no, we haven't we haven't done any crowdsourcing on like the Calico Chameleon, and Pat wants this to be another Calico Chameleon so bad. That's a, that was a straw man argument, right? But guess yep. what? T- uh, Tommy did. He started up a eBay crowdfunding site. So yeah, w- w- what's up with that? You know, that's not congruency either. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he initially when it first when he first announced in television, I'm pretty sure he said uh, he wasn't taking any money up front. Uh, not until the console was like coming out. Then he started saying, "Okay, well, we're gonna do the Founders Edition. Then we're going to do another." Uh, they did like another ten thousand pre-orders like a month or two back. So it's like it's it's. Well, you uh, you stop, right? Yeah. Like, uh, did you guys? Yeah, yeah. We had we had a uh, we had GameStop and EB Games up here in Canada too at one point, and uh, yeah. Yeah, they haven't released it yet. Yeah, they're either. they're they're owned by uh, the EB same games. store, and there's like there there it's are weird. like EB Games in um, Buffalo. It's it's weird though that EB Games doesn't have it yet on their website, you know, because it's the same company, both sides of the border. They they run the show. Don't you find that kind of funny, man? <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Like like uh, but but yeah. Uh, EB Games has it now, or no, not e- GameStop has it. Now I'm getting it mixed up. GameStop has this thing, and uh, w- w- what can you say about it? It's it's not going it's not going go anywhere. You know, it's it's lo- it's uh, it's ta- he's taking pre-orders off of e- EB or uh, GameStop, and uh, he's taking pre-orders off of that crowdfunding website, and he's taking investments. 
Yes, I, I I only briefly heard about that, but he's doing some kind of crowdfunding or investment thing. It's called fig.co. If you go on fig.co, right, that's his crowdfunding website. You type in Amigo or Amico and uh, you'll see his crowdfunding website there. And the way it works, right, it's not like Kickstarter. You don't need like a prototype like Kickstarter. And they have like it's it's like weird, right? The way you, the way you could do it there, they have two channels of payment. You you can either contribute to the as an investor, as one payment channel, or the other payment channel. You could just uh, do like a it's like a pre order of hundred dollars. So it's like it's not a full pre order, right? It's like a deposit. So so that that raises a lot of flags with that in itself, you know? Right. Because think about this, right? He did uh, the founder's pre-order. Uh, I'm not sure when that was, but he did a pr- founder's pre-order. Then in March, he did uh, another pre-order, the the VIP pre-order. So why why is this guy do multiple pre-orders, right? Why is this guy do multiple pre-orders? They, they want the money, right? I mean, that's what it comes down to. He 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 has all the he, or if he has all this money, then he shouldn't be taking pre-orders for this thing. Like, like honestly, he, he should only be taking pre-orders when this thing's manufactured. And at, at this moment, guess what? This thing is not even manufactured. That's what I'm guessing. It's not manufactured. He, he, at least a month ago, he stated it wasn't in manufacturing in the in a, in his interview with uh, Rich. But that I mean, flex, man. yeah, no, yeah, I man, I it, I agree. I mean, it's only a few months away, right? Because usually, like, uh, if you go on GameStop's website, when they take pre-orders on GameStop, right, they usually do it for stuff that's already been manufactured. Or it's 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 like a proven company, right? And GameStop, we already know that whole fiasco with GameStop this year. GameStop's at this point right now where they could go under at any moment because the stores aren't open because of the COVID-19. And and what does Tommy do? He you know he, he, the first American retailer he could get this thing into is, is one that might go bankrupt to come October or before <laughs> then. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> true. That's true. And uh, it, it's just hilarious. I, I find this thing's whole hilarious because if if you pre-order this thing right on GameStop, my recent video I put up like uh, or one of my recent videos. If you pre-order this thing, that's why I said my video. And GameStop goes under. Guess what? You lost your money because it's oh, not yeah. television as your money. It's GameStop. And if even if they restructure because of bankruptcy, yeah, you know, you 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 you, you could probably get your money back as a creditor, right? But guess what? The creditors that get their money back are the actual people that sold GameStop product, right? In television, if they haven't shipped out the, the Miko to GameStop, then that contract is void. And I didn't go into detail about that in my video, but if if, if they don't have a, a Miko's physically at GameStop, right, guess what? In television can't go after them. They can't go after them as creditors if they claim, uh, I, I forgot what it is, Chapter something, Chapter 11, I think. I'm yeah. not sure of the, the American... Uh, like technical terms for it, but yeah, if they if they file for bankruptcy in the states, they can't go after them because because they haven't physically shipped out any product to them. They're not considered a creditor by contract. Uh, they can't; those contracts are void if if it goes bankrupt. And I did go into that detail in my video just to keep it short, you know. And, and people don't people don't get that. If you pre-order this thing on GameStop, you're fucked. You're you're straight up flat out fucked. <laughs> Because oh. you're gambling, right? I'm not it, saying GameStop will go bankrupt, but there's there's like a strong chance that they will go bankrupt, man. It's it's if you don't take my word for it, right? Use your computer, right? Even if you're a Miko fanboy listening in right now, use your computer and look into this shit. Sorry, I, I went off in a tangent again. <laughs> no, that's I'm, that's I'm all okay. Lot. Because I just, I, I kind of, I got to grill this into these guys, right? Like, they're trying to grill their bullshit into me. You know, I, I'm, I'm countering that with facts. Yeah, no, no, I think facts are the most important, right? Uh, so let me see what other points we got here on our list. We've got, uh, 
Sorry, one sec. I need a cool down too. I'm getting a little uh, heated up. Yeah. Under, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this this nonsense, man. Okay, so you've got one point here. This was a point you outlined, which was the whole idea of whether they actually need to sell or whether they're going to just make money off of uh, selling it to the distribution, like uh, like a see, Walmart and whatnot. See, I, I think I'm the only guy that's made this point, right? Nobody on YouTube or social media, from what I understand, at least, at least up to now, with what I've taken in from this, nobody's made this point that it's it's not like a distribution scam. So with capitalism, right? If if you try to sell a product to like physical motor brick and mortar stores, you you have to set up through a dis distributor pretty much. There's always like a middleman when it comes to re the, the retail market for the most part. So if Tommy Tommy's retailers that he's listed off is Inex, they're they're the biggest gaming retailer in North America. So any any video game pretty much that gets sold in physical form or any console, it, it pretty much goes through Enix for the most part. Right. They're, they're the biggest middleman. Uh, then then you got like uh you, you got retail giants. Right. They might not they might cut out the middleman like Walmart, Amazon, uh, GameStop's got. They're they're pretty big. They they probably cut out the middleman too. Right. Uh, so so if if you have a distributor that takes in orders. They they buy they they set up those orders and they buy directly from the company, and so you'd have a situation like let's say GameStop because because they've already they're already taking pre-orders right on their yep. website, so they're they're taking in those pre-orders, so it's not it's not a risk to them exactly because they're holding on to the money, but say they take in their pre-orders, and uh, say they they've amounted let's say they've amounted maybe like five hundred up till now. Since uh, Tommy announced this thing on GameStop, did when did he announce it? This month, uh, May. Yep. I forgot the date. It's, yeah. Well, actually, so, it might so, have been last week, like yeah. right near the end of April. Yeah. So say say the open uh, pre-orders went up on GameStop, and they've amounted uh, because let, let's be real, the most of GameStop and EB game consumers, anybody I know personally that goes to those stores still. Even though they have bad, shady business practices, uh, GameStop and EB Games, like that aside, the consumer doesn't do that much research, right? They they just they just they don't care if they they have bad experiences. They keep going back because it's convenient, right? That's what's right. the real convenience about GameStop, uh, uh, Amazon, and Walmart, right? The convenience of just they're there. You don't you don't have to do research. The products are there. Uh, people don't really price compare when they they've been going to those stores for like ages, right? It's just it's just how some people are, and those consumers that still go to the GameStop, even though they probably had bad experiences, they 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 trust GameStop with with some products that they just list out there regardless of what they are, and they just buy it off of them or they pre-order. So right. That, that's that that said, right? I'm I'm tr I'm trying to stay on topic here. GameStop amounts from those consumers that don't do the research. They amount 500 pre-orders, we'll say. Oh, so, oh, oh, then, that's so small. It, it, I, I believe it's small numbers at this point, right? Because it's it's not on their front page like I did I, I did in one of my videos. I don't know if you watched it yet, but one of my videos had me. Uh, I yeah, like okay, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did see that, yeah. But, so I, I went on the GameStop's website, right? And I, I pretty much shown people that even though it, the pre-orders were already out on GameStop's website, it was already a couple of days in, and I put up the video showing exactly on the front page of GameStop. There's not even on their splash page, right, where you can scroll through with their their biggest product announcements. And that takes up most of your br browser, right, with the the size of it, the image. They yep. didn't announce the Miko on their front page. It's their newest, latest, and greatest product, family friendly. Why wouldn't they announce it on their front page? Oh, surprise, surprise! GameStop doesn't have that much faith in it. <laughs> yeah. Well, nobody, nobody's even heard of it, right? I mean, you think about, uh, for example, like the PS5. I mean, everyone knows the PS5's coming, right? And that's because of a lot of media is covering that. Same with the Xbox Series X, even though I think that's terrible naming. Everyone knows that's coming. 
Uh, the Amico, yeah, basically the only... the Well, especially when you think about they have an Xbox... Uh, Xbox One X. Xbox One. And, and then the original Xbox, right? Everybody thought the original Xbox was Xbox One. Then Microsoft is like, no, 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 hold your horses! Right, so, so now you've got <laughs> Xbox, Xbox One... <laughs> Xbox One X, Xbox Series X. It's like, this is just... What is wrong with these guys? Anyways, we're getting on a total tangent. <laughs> Sorry, man. Every time I hear that shit, it's just like, man, I know I've lasted, <sighs> man. I, I can't hold back, man. It's, it's just painful like, just to even <laughs> think about. <laughs> yeah, Xbox, you know, re regardless of... Uh, but like, people know it's coming, right? Or, people know it's coming. Yeah, people don't well, even know what the Miko is, other than, and, and even, say... Even video, yeah. Even even that video I did, right? I, I I showed in my video that there's even though it wasn't at the top of the front page, they had a preview window for the Xbox Series X and the PS5 on GameStop's front page. You know, and, yeah, and, and like the either. Switch and the Switch Lite yeah. and all that type stuff, right? Uh, oh yeah. So it's like nobody knows this thing's coming. It's only like six months away. Uh, Tommy's been saying that they're going to bust out marketing in another month or two. Well, he said around E3, which is what? The beginning of June? Or when E3 would have been. Is so it June or July? I keep getting the dates mixed up. It's so June? it's yeah. like, uh, it's like that's, that's, let's just say it's July, okay? That's four yeah. months between making any moves in the marketing sphere and the release of the console, right? That's that that in theory should be a good amount of time to get people to play it. But I mean, you think about Tommy's video he put out where he said they had 150 million dollars of uh, what did he say? Was that a loan or something? It's a uh, line of credit, right? Line of like, credit. Anybody can get a line of credit. Do you believe like with only four months to go? Right from when marketing begins, and 150 million dollars to spend, uh, he's going to be able to market this, build it, box it, ship it, get it shipped to North America, ship it to the customers. I mean, that that in and of itself is like I think probably over 150 million dollars. I mean. Uh, especially marketing like if you look at like movies for example right yeah. movies movies will be produced and they'll be like the budget for marketing our movie is 50 percent of the cost of the movie so if a movie is a 200 million dollar movie it's actually going to cost 400 million dollars because yeah it, they they need it, it, it to make a it, huge it, it, amount it, it, of money yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. And those, that's a good analogy to use because uh, I'm, I'm a big movie buff. If I, besides being a gamer, I, I love watching movies. And I, I actually, I know what it takes to put into uh, like a, a movie, right? I know like they have to budget, they have to write scripts. There, there's a lot of aspects. To, making a movie is a, a really expensive thing. And like you use that analogy with, with marketing a console, uh, a console is the exact same kind of business plan that you got to set out. You have multiple things working at once, and you need, especially with any platform, right? Whether it's it's a digital platform or it's a physical like form form of uh, like a platform, right? You have to have the the right budget to advertise it, right? And, and I I don't think I I don't think like honestly like uh, this thing's coming together the way the guy planned, and he's going to execute it plan because. It just, it just seems like a lot of his facts are working against him, or, or a lot of a lot of his statements. I mean, that he's putting all the or information he's putting out, it's working against him. You know, Whether I honestly, I honestly believe he would have been better off just not talking just so much That's about it, point. right? Yeah. Because then there would be less yeah. to question and scratch your head and be like, "Oh, uh, is this correct? Does this make sense?" Because when he's constantly making statements and then contradicting statements with other statements, it's like, okay, what is what is correct and what is not? I am so confused, right? Because yeah, yeah, when you when you when you essentially lie a lot, 
you you forget your lies if you lie so much. You know, that's, yeah. that, that's what I've heard, right? I've heard that from so many people. If you're a pathological liar, whether or not Tommy is or not, I'm not accusing him of anything. I'm saying if if you're a patholo- or pathological liar, no matter who you are, to keep up with all that information, and if it's misinformation you're putting out there, you're going to trip over your own bullshit eventually. <laughs> yeah. No, totally. I mean, I, that's that's that whole thing, right? If, if you question someone long enough, they'll slip up on their lies. Uh, well, anyways, let She's me look through our list yeah. here of what totally else we got. Right yeah. yeah, well, totally, right? And it's totally because he's constantly making statements, and he'd honestly be better add, off yeah. being quiet about it. I just want to add one more thing, you know, to that. And, uh, yeah, he, he straight up should have just not talked anymore after he had, like, some, like, really bad interviews where he just, he freaked out, he spazzed out at people. You're, a, like, I, I said this to him in one of my, uh, my first videos, actually, about him, and, and the Miko, I, I, I straight up, like, posted, look how erratic this guy's, like, uh, acting, you know, behaving. And uh, even in the chat, I'm like, CEOs don't really behave the way you do. And he got even more upset when I said that to him, right? You know, like a lot of CEOs don't do interviews, especially with on social media, because the internet, right? It's like the wild, wild west. It is. It really is. Man, if, like, like, dude, your your life is being put under a microscope. It's worse than the paparazzi is, man. Like, the the internet any- will Google the shit out of everything to find out if you're a liar, basically, right? And I'm not saying he's a liar, but I'm saying that that's what happens to anyone. I mean, th- you've seen crazy stuff like like Google, like people figuring out crimes and stuff by using the internet. Oh, it's, no way, it, it's crazy because a lot, a lot of people, right, they, they put one that, or yeah, two to two together and stuff. It, they put things together. Uh, in, in ways other people might not see, you know, that's why, that's why me and you are talking, right? We're trying to see if we get uh, different perspectives out of one of the, one, one another, right? Yeah. We're trying to get different viewpoints and, and we're trying to establish uh, well, what's going on with this situation through discussion. And, and the same thing with people looking into things for themselves. You don't have to take my word for it. Uh, the people don't have to take your word for it, Kevin. People don't have to take Tommy's word for it, right? They'll look into things themselves and figure it out for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean that's the whole power of the internet, right? And, and I mean that's why, like, when he's on these crazy, like, uh, trying to control the yeah. narrative yeah. of everything, right? Like, if someone disagrees with him or his ideas, and I'm sure sure he's going to disagree with this entire podcast. But I mean, when people are disagreeing with him he wants to control the narrative he wants to take it offline to have discussions i saw this twitter thread a while ago where people were discussing like uh well specifically it was one guy who was questioning the the numbers right and he was saying like if you're selling consoles at this price it's not going to equal what you need to break Wait, even yeah I, I know who you're talking are you talking about frank stavaldi yeah 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 right and i it, I, I, I see that yeah uh, the guy's like a he, he's he's not only a former developer right he's he's a game uh, preservationist and uh he he's he's like in the he's in the retro scene right he's he's in one of the newest documentaries uh that pat, pat Danis uh, punk released with this other guy uh it's called for, not for sale i'm not trying to promote it or advertisement but the whole thing the whole documentary is, is essentially digital versus physical and we we can sort of touch about the whole digital physical aspect with Amico too later on in this discussion if you want. But, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Frank 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 Cifaldi pretty much he knows his shit, and he he was going he was going about it in the most chilled, relaxing, uh, non you know non critical way possible. He's being very polite with with uh, Tommy on on Twitter when I read uh, that whole uh, manuscript. Of of like them communicating with each other. Yeah. Yeah, and, totally. And, uh, and and Tommy, he he was trying to control the narrative the whole time, but 
numbers don't lie, man. That's why we have uh, arithmetic, right? That's why it was invented. Uh, yeah. <laughs> numbers don't lie. And in the programming world, right, I'm not a programmer, right? I don't know if you know anything about programming, Kevin, but uh, essentially what programming is is y- you got to know uh, – w- w- what's it called? Uh, y- you got to know your, your numbers, right, when yeah. it comes to programming. Yeah. It, uh, it, it all gets down to, uh, like, hex code, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, uh, binary, 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 yeah, you, binary you but, uh, but, yeah. uh, this it, guy is a programmer, a of, right? A lot of languages get broken down into numbers, essentially, which is binary, like you mentioned. Yeah. And, and, and Frank Cifoli, not always a programmer, right? He was approaching it in a rational, uh, calm manner, demeanor on, on Twitter. He, he was, he wasn't trying to. He's trying. He wasn't trying to be aggressive, right? With the way he was writing against uh, Twitter posts uh, for Tommy, he's being like very. Uh, what, what's the? He's, he's trying to remain impartial, right, and calm. And uh, he, he was he was asking him straight questions, uh, fair questions too, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I think like, it was yeah. perfectly fair and reasonable questions. And uh, my 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 point was essentially that uh once tommy realized he was called out on it he was essentially like well i'm not discussing this publicly talk to me in dms right and it was like okay uh dm me and then we'll talk about it through dms and it's like he didn't want to proceed any further because he knew he was kind of at least the numbers didn't lie whether tommy put out contradicting statements or or just the the numbers he put out were wrong. We don't know, but that's it, and, right? And what's, what's cool about the whole scenario is, right? Uh, Frank Cifaldi, right? He, he sounds like he has like an Italian last name too. I don't know if he's Italian or, or what, but uh, you know, if if he identifies with Tommy that way, if they got the both like the same background with each other or not, he, it sounds like he's Italian also though, but. You know, he, he was being very, like, you know, they could kind of relate to each other that way. So if Tommy gets them in, like, a, a PM mode, right, like a private messaging mode, he could control the narrative that way. He could be like, hey, because I've seen him do it, and <laughs> anybody listening, right, you could go back into, like, uh, like any interviews that Tommy's done, staged interviews, uh, real interviews, uh, whatever interviews you want to, like, label them, because he's done mixed interviews, right? Some of that he staged himself. Don't take my word for it. You can see for yourself. You can see Tommy, the way he tries to control the narrative all the time, right? And uh, w- when I worked in security in the past, that that's the sort of thing that a sociopath does, right? I'm not saying Tommy's a sociopath. I'm just saying that's sociopathic behaviors, right? Yeah. And, and, and my, my educational background's a lot to do with psychology and sociology, right? Because C- I study that in college and university. So... I'm not, I'm not I'm not talking over my ass here, right? I'm not an expert either, right? I'm not an expert, but I, I have a, to a degree I have the education to know human behavior. I'm just going to make that or make people aware of that. You know, I'm not I'm not you know here to push Tommy's buttons, right? Even even though I come off like I am in my videos, right? I'm just trying to make them. Uh, I'm presenting the facts and I'm trying to make my videos kind of like uh, a little light and humorous, right? For yep. what it is for what it is because it, it's it's a tough pill to swallow when people feed you facts right sometimes because because yeah if if you have a, a certain narrative right that you want to stay on like or a certain goal in life it, it's hard when you get people chiming in when you're trying to stay on your your course of action which is him releasing the miko right uh sorry I'm, I'm getting a little off topic now right one one thing that Tommy said, right? Uh, one one uh, viewer in one of the chat rooms asked him, "Hey, Tommy, uh, wh- what made you so successful, pal?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, and, and Tommy Tommy replies, right? He he's like, "Oh, I listen to a lot of like uh, Tommy uh, or uh, Tony Robertson tapes, right? You know that public speaking guy, right? Okay, Tony yeah. Robertson, uh, the guy from the infomercials, right?" And uh, oh, motivational geez. speakers, that's what they're called, right? Tony Robertson's a big one. And uh, he, and uh, what else? Uh, the Secret, or is that what it's called? The bo- book, The Secret? Oh, the book, he, The Secret, yeah. Yeah, I, I, was, I was trying to remember the name of the book. Tommy listed off The Secret, right? So so these are very, like, 
like Tony Tony Robertson, right? He's a very optimistic like guy, right? From what I've seen, and he he tries to push people on. You have your you have your goals right set, just like the the book The Secret. You have your goals set, and you gotta follow through. The problem with most people, right, is they don't follow through with their 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 objectional or or their goals in life. They don't follow through with their goals, and and that's where you you have like uh you. Or you don't meet your goals if you don't follow through, right? It's like if you ever played golf, right? I'll use this analogy: if you play golf and you swing your golf club, right? Yeah. You don't get a good you don't get a good hit on the ball. It doesn't go further, right? If you don't follow through in the correct motion, right? And I'm not a big golfer, but I know there's right. a bunch yeah. of golf. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right? definitely right about that. Yeah. You gotta follow through with your swing, and it's the same thing with Tommy, right? He's he's like. Uh, he's established like uh, that this belief system, right? This this uh, super optimistic because he claims he's an optimist, right? But I don't think he is. I don't think he's an optimist, but that's just my opinion, right? So if he establishes this kind of uh, like belief system, right? This is the psychology behind the guy, the CEO of the Intellivision Amico. <laughs> uh, if he establishes that and tries to promote it through everything he does in his life with his ideology. And people try to steer him the other way, or, or try to uh, question what he's doing. He 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 gets he gets upset. He gets, he gets really upset. angry. Yeah, I've seen some angry tangents online. So I'm pretty sure there's like a, a way in Tony Robertson's uh, books, right, in his DVDs, and like it's it's because it's like a 12 step program. Also, from what I know, he tries to. He tries to teach people how to deal with anger and stress and all, all sort of life emotional aspects, right, in his life. And I think Tommy skipped that book or DVD or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, God. Just, I think he just focused on the business aspect mostly of Tony Robertson's teachings. And uh, Yeah, he skipped a few and, chapters. And, he and, he, and, he like, glanced like, over it. Yeah. He skimmed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying this. This is one analogy I want to use, right? It's it's only my opinion, so don't take this with a grain of salt, people. Like, if you're a television fanboy out there, j- just calm your titties, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm just saying you gotta like uh, you gotta take a step back, right? I'm a pragmatic guy, right? and if, if Tommy identifies like he's an optimist. Then I don't believe that, but if he if he identifies like he's an optimist, right? It's 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 not a great route to go if you're if you're not staying optimistic at all times, right? And it's emotionally straining if you're trying to be super happy, go lucky all the time, because uh, like I'm getting into real world stuff here, real shit, and uh, I'm just trying to like explain to you my viewpoint of of what this guy is, right? I'm not saying he's a bad person. I'm just saying, like, this is this is the guy's mentality, right? He, yeah. He's, he, it's emotionally straining to try to be happy all the time. And a lot of these people that claim they're optimists uh, online, on, through social media, right? Whether through uh, Instagram, through motivational pictures, like, you know those word pictures? Like, be all you could be, <laughs> you know? Like, and, and then, you know, they just removed, like, join the Navy part or, or join the, you know, the Army. Yeah, totally, know? yeah. <laughs> uh, there's all those motivational posters and all this other uh, propaganda, optimistic propaganda out there. It, but it doesn't apply to the real world. I'm telling you guys out there, right? If you want to learn anything, it doesn't apply to the real world in all aspects because we're human. We go through different emotions of being happy, being sad, being angry, right? Tommy's been angry in his interviews with me. He's been erratic too, right? And and I don't I don't you know, I, I don't like uh I don't blame the guy for, for acting that way. It, you know, because it's a human emotion, right? I yeah. just I just disagree with him acting that way when when he's he's trying to he's trying to convey a certain narrative at all times that's not true that's that's what i don't disagree with a man about you know i don't fault him for being a human it's just it's just the way it is right this is my view viewpoint of yeah the yeah i mean uh i would agree with you that you know his reactions are not unreasonable sometimes because people are questioning his life life goal or or his path in life right but, yeah. but yeah. uh 
you're not winning anyone over. You, no debate is ever won by calling someone an idiot. That only emboldens people's train of thought. I mean, we might not even be having this discussion right now if he was more reasonable in the way he approached people who questioned him. Instead, uh, he he's like, even in the Rich interview, uh, the Review Tech interview, right? He's like, you've got some real dummies in your chat. And it's like, well, <laughs> you know, if, if, uh, if you didn't call them dummies, you know, maybe they yeah. wouldn't be emboldened in this train of thought of being basically like, hey, this guy's kind of scummy, right? So it's, it's like, yeah. uh, I guess you could argue it's a little bit of the chicken and the egg. Where did it start? Who... Who shot on who first? I don't really know, but ultimately it's like, well, uh, he's the one who is trying to sell a product, you know, and whether it will affect the marketing, probably not. Maybe to some degree, I do believe that there is some level of uh, casual gamers are influenced by what the hardcore gamers are into. He seems to think that's not the case. We'll see what happens basically in what is it October? Yeah, October tenth. Uh, I have that like uh, yeah, it's it's in my mind now that release date because I'm, I'm gonna be following this for months now. Whether or not <laughs> I have like, some professional stuff that comes out that prevents me re to release videos, uh, I, I, like I don't have much to go, to do right now. I'm not I'm not working with the COVID thing. Right? I'm stalled right now with the. Whole thing. Yeah, everyone's yeah. on break, just, sort just, of. Just from everybody. Yeah, and I'm not sure what's going to happen a couple of months from now, but whether or not I, I I could post videos on it, there's still going to be other guys like me out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Pat was the whole one who started the the whole questioning it, and to be honest with you, I'm not even really a, a Pat fan. I think that Pat is uh, very antagonistic and very. Uh, he loves to push buttons and say things that are really sort of inappropriate at times, but uh, he had some uh, fair I've points. Heard, I've heard firsthand from people that I, I know personally that met Pat, right? They've told me uh, the guy's he's he's kind of like Tommy in the same way. He's very uh, he, he's he's going he's uh, he's money grubbing. He's 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 not money grubbing, but you know he's he's trying to he's very mo money. F uh, focused, you know. Yeah, oriented. Yeah. And, and yeah, like uh, I understand Pat's got to make a, a living off of YouTube, right? Social media, but it it doesn't like uh, it doesn't excuse you from people to criticizing you. It, you're you're like Tommy. You're they're they're like the same in, in that aspect. They're 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 open to people making comments about them. Yeah, and uh, people criticizing them also. Like I'm, 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 I'm being, uh, you know, I'm, I'm being like, uh, not attacked, but uh, yeah, people, people are going after me with what I say. Yeah, you're and, lamb and they don't, they don't with either. And and I'm fine with it, man. I'm just like, yeah, keep it coming. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, really, you you have what? What is it? Seventy or sixty subscribers? So I mean. Are, uh, the reach of your channel is not as big as Pat's, right? Which is probably why... Uh, it's a drop in the bucket, right? It's a drop. If if, if a drop, it's a minuscule or, or molecule, I mean. Yeah. In uh, YouTube. It's it's not very big. Um, this is a hobby channel. And, uh, he, he's got to realize there's other, there's other guys out there too besides Pat, you know, that are going to be talking about this. And even though he could flip some guys like uh, Review Tech Game or Game, uh, no, no, not Review Tech. I mean, uh, Game Tech USA. Rich, he could flip that guy. He could flip uh, Vera Dark, right? He could, he could flip uh, Smash JT to to buy yeah. the profit to be shills because because it's already been established. He's paid these people off, whether in merchandise, Ferrari rides, or uh, free swag. You know, <laughs> it's been established like 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 come on. And and Tommy, right? If you look at any of his uh, interviews. He's he knows his people in the chat room, right? Like uh, he he's noticed uh, what's what's his name, uh, the quartering. That's one big YouTuber. He's noticed uh, Rerez. These are all bigger bigger YouTubers, right, out there. Okay, and that's a good as, point. And they're either as bigger big as uh, uh, 
Deep Tech USA, Rich, or they're bigger, right? Yeah. And uh, you know where he said it? He, he's this is all recorded, right, on other YouTubers' channels. Not I haven't I haven't reposted this stuff or talked about it yet. But in terms of the material, right, I could go on for like probably months and months, right, with material that Tommy's given me with live chat sessions to talk about. But I, I got better things to do, man. I got I got to feed myself. I got other hobbies to, <laughs> to work on. Right? I, gotta I gotta play some actual action. games. I, I gotta I gotta maintain relationships I have in my life. You know, the ladies aren't going away for me. I gotta go to them. <laughs> 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 right? Yeah. I I got I got other things to do, but uh, he, like yeah, Tommy's giving me so much information to to repost on my my YouTube channel about him offering bribes to these uh, social media influencers. You yeah. Know, he, he's, already, he's already offered Pat and Ian that. Pat turned him down, and, and guess what Tommy does? He attacks him, right? And, and you know why Pat kept posting videos up on his YouTube channel? It's because Pat's probably, pro- probably gone through what I'm going through right now with all these uh, Amico fanboys attacking him, you know, they're, they're on, his, on his channel, right, and through Twitter and whatnot. When do you get that sort of like that sort of like a uh, vile like uh, attacking going on on social media to you? You're like, yeah, of course you're going to be on on guard, right? Who's going to stand for that shit? If if you respect yourself, you're not going to stand for that bullshit. Totally, yeah. And and, and even even though uh, you know, like uh, there's other guys like oh, on, on social media, right? It, it doesn't take long for Tommy to off these guys free swags Ferrari rides or money get them turned right because a lot of people like uh, they're they're in uh, bad situations right now financially it's, it, in the current times right now with this COVID thing going on uh, if, if they're relying on social media right to pay them they, they might be they, they might be having issues with that too right there's some there's some uh, Twitch Twitch users saying that they're having issues too, with uh, getting getting the same revenue stream coming coming in. Oh yeah, and, no, uh, I I believe that with Twitch. I I don't necessarily believe that he's paying off everyone with money. I mean, maybe rich, maybe rich, maybe uh, what was that other guy, Smash JT? Because that was such a polarizing switch with Smash JT from one one side <laughs> to the other. Like it was like a, a very dramatic switch, but uh, with with some of the smaller channels, I think it's just he gave them a T-shirt and makes them feel valid, right? Because that then they feel like okay, I'm a real YouTuber now, therefore uh, I'm definitely gonna be supporting the Amico all the way, right? And if you question it, I'm gonna like crucify you. <laughs> it's it's crazy, man. Like. Uh... It's it's never going to stop if uh, these guys don't like realize like you, you got to keep yourself grounded with your opinions too because you you don't want to attack somebody right you you just want to sort of uh, explain explain your reasoning and then present it as is yeah no totally you definitely don't want to attack anyone and I I'm sure that they're gonna especially Tommy is gonna take this discussion as an attack. But it's like we're literally just pointing out everything that he's put out there and saying where we have questions, right? Where there are question marks. And I think most of it's reasonable. I mean, I didn't even really get into a ton of uh, some of the more insane things he said. But, I mean, I think this is probably enough for the time being i mean what do you think about wrapping up at this point yeah it, it, yeah we've been talking for a, a, a while now I'm, I'm going to just point out one more thing uh so recently uh tommy posted on his twitter page he posted uh two german retailers that are stocking this thing okay and what's funny about that I, I was going to do a video on this but i just i haven't I, i'm wrapping up this other video that i'm going to post about the miko so you'll, oh, you'll see that soon great uh, you know, it keeps coming, right? He, he keeps, uh, you know, releasing the information out there. So he got two German retailers. One's called, uh, I think, Market something. 
And the other one's called uh, Saturn, Saturn uh, uh, Gaming or something. I, I'm, I'm trying to pull them up here, these these websites, I'm trying to find them. Hold on. Uh, but anyway, these German retailers you want to have it for 280 euros, I, I believe. Oof. Yeah, so, so I'm pulling up the websites right now. Okay, I, I have the link you sent me. It's uh, Saturn.de. I don't know. Saturn.de. And the other one's MediaMarket.de, I think. Okay, yeah. So I don't know anything about these German websites, right? But it's it's kind of crazy that the German market's going to happen, uh, or, or, or going to have it there, right? I don't know how big these stores are because I haven't done any research. That's why I want to sort of do my research and then put the information out there about these stores. Because I don't know if they're like, a, if media markets like a GameStop equivalent or they're just some random uh, online retailer or what in Germany. I don't know much about Germany, uh, but uh, it's 280, right? It's 280, uh, 280 euros. And that's even more money in American dollars, man. That's crazy. It is. I, I don't even know. I'll be fair here, right? Normally, a uh, uh, European consoles they're higher, right? They're higher in price. But if Tommy's getting this thing made in China, uh, Germany's closer, I think, to China than the states is, is right? I think, I think that's yeah, how it works. I think so. Yeah. At like, at like, because uh, <laughs> because they're not they're not like they're not like uh, West Europe. They're like East East Europe, so they're a lot closer, I think, than the states is in terms of like traveling or shipping distance right and some of that stuff they could just ship they could ship yeah directly by land through through china to, all the way to germany so it's not like boat you know it, it, it could go pretty quick like, uh, i think it could go quicker to get to europe besides the the, the logistic part of Ger germany getting these things uh I, th I think he's got like a, a distributor in in Europe just for the Miko, and I wanted to I wanted to like sort of do more research on this stuff, but the fact that the price point on this is like so high, it's it's just it's kind of mind boggling, man. Yeah, I mean, he, let me. Uh, I'm looking here at the conversion rates, right? And 279 euros is 306 American dollars. I mean, if you we were to take the it's not the special edition. This special edition is like 300, right? And that goes over that with the conversion. But let's 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 say uh, it's not the special version, right? That that one's at 300. That's like the purple one. You're, you're still paying more, right? And you're not getting uh, you're not getting anything more with that too. No. I I haven't translated this page, but I don't think it comes with uh, like. I think it comes with something actually. It's it's just something about like a soundtrack on here. I even translated. The oh page, yeah, but... it comes with uh, a CD of the music by Tommy. So I think it's music. Now I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I know in the Founders Edition, he was including a CD that had like music from Earthworm Jim, and some of the other titles he's worked on in the past. That explains the goofy pictures of his old albums here. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it, it just looks kind of like really goofy. Like, uh, well, yeah, it's, anyway. it's probably uh, 90s uh, artwork, right? All of his, most of his yeah, stuff is from the 90s. I'm looking at the media market website right here, right now. He's showing screenshots of the game, like the, the what is it? One of the Astro Blaster games. Uh, so the, yeah. the Yahtzee type game. And, Astro uh, Smash, Yahtzee, and Smash, yeah. uh, Shark Shark. The skiing game. Oh, yeah. skiing! I totally forgot about skiing. But yeah, that's another one of those games that you can get like on the Play Store, basically, right? Now, there, the there's Android a shop. That says, yeah, there, there's a screenshot here that says Earthworm Jim Anthology. Now, I don't know if that's music from Earthworm Jim or what. Um, it'd be it'd be weird if it was like the ROMs, the old ROMs of the game. No, that'd, that'd be like that'd be that that'd be like a a totally no. It's probably the music, right? It's probably it's got to be the music. It's got to be the music. Because because that'd be like a total one eighty, right? I'd be like, oh, this is new information. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like what? 
Yeah. So, so yeah, he, so he's got two German retailers, and uh, there's the ESRB type rating. On, they have their own ratings in Germany, so it's it's on here too, or in Europe. And yeah, this thing's rated. And when we're talking about the whole censorship earlier, uh, Tommy's got to go through the ESRB on this console too, or this Android device, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, so, it, so the is rating it, is six plus. Is that what it is? Am I seeing that right? Maybe ages six plus. Uh, I'm not. I, like I don't speak German, right? But I'm guessing that number six means six plus, right? Uh, I don't like. I'd have to do more research on this before I do a video. But yeah, I'm not sure how big these stores are in Germany. Germany is a, a huge com uh, country, mind you. So and it's a rich country. So it's good that he's putting it out there. But uh, I I don't know. Like I I don't think Germans would buy into this thing, man. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I, I don't just, know. I don't know. It's just saying, right? I'm. I'm I don't know, like, like it, the thing is, right, with with Europe, um, consoles aren't as big in Europe as they are here. You know that? Like, oh, really? Is that true? Yeah, like, if if you, like, uh, I got I got I got like a family I know from Europe, right? And they they tell me like like a lot of them don't. They're not into like, or, or at least back in the day they weren't into video games. Now they are, but they they aren't like. Uh, it was it was it wasn't a big like it was probably like the distribution back in the day, but it wasn't like a huge thing, right? If if you look back at like uh, other YouTubers from like the UK, uh, you'll you'll see them talking about like consoles that were more predominant than like uh, the Genesis or the Master System. There, like the Master System was like bigger than the NES at the time that, that right. it was over here in uh, here in North America or the, with the Famicom in, in Japan. So, you know, they had like different dis distribution and things caught on more differently in Europe than they did here back in the day, right? And, and now, e even even with current gen consoles, right? I'd, I'd use that as an example. They're like the PlayStation Four is still more expensive there than it is here, right? So, like, uh, it, it's kind of it's kind of like cost prohibitive for some families, right? If they got to pay that that much extra for consoles if they're more expensive out there right uh, I, and, and he's he's kind of showing that the thing is more expensive when we we did the conversion in uh, american dollars and with canadian dollars it's like <laughs> you, you don't stand a chance man buying this if it was like if it was like in, in euros right right it's, i mean it, if i do the conversion to canadian dollars i'm just looking on google and it's 250 us makes 350 canadian and if you want the purple console, here, you want the purple got, console, it's 420. Wow. So, yeah, I got like over 420 here on my conversion, like you. And uh, it, it's like, that's the cost of a PS4 in Canada, man. It, that's crazy, man. That's like a brand new PS4 with tax. That's, that's like a new PS4. And a PS4 so, and a PS4. I mean, all, ultimately, everything comes down to this point. A PS4... Yeah has the titles it has the games right yes. the switch has the games the xbox uh, we're not going to talk about that but i mean there are no games i don't understand how this is going to sell like hotcakes when there are no games granted yeah. we're 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 what is that we're we're five we're months out we we're talking about the game quality, but we didn't talk about just the the lineup before it alone, right? The the lineup alone, like five games, those games are very weak, you know. Like let, let's go back and compare this to uh, like the NES came with the Duck Hunt in North America, Duck Hunt and Mario, right? Yeah, so that, that was the packet game, and they had not only that, it, it got so popular the NES at the time in the 80s that they did little other bundles, right? They did a bunch of other bundaroos, right? That's <laughs> 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 the South Park, uh, like, version of, uh, of bundles. So, uh, yeah, like, that had Mario, man. That had Duck Hunt. The, the whole gimmick was, like, uh, the arcade-style, like, uh, RF, like, gun, right? The, the gun, right? The the shooter gun for, yeah. with a Nintendo. And, uh, 
that that got that that gimmick the gun got people into it, and and Mario Mario was like that secured it. I think Mario established like a whole cult man following. Mario is it, huge. It's, yeah, it, it's still till today, man. Like kids identify Mario. Like like my my uh like I'll use my niece and uh, nep- nephew for example, right? They know what Mario is, and they've never played a video game ever. Like that's that's fact, man. They, they keep coming up to me, man. If if they're over and they see me playing video games, right? At my place, they're like, "Hello, oh, hey, you, are you playing Mario?" And I'm like, "Where do they learn that? They haven't even played a video game yet, man." Wow, that's crazy. There's, yeah, they haven't touched one video game. They already know what Mario is because because they watch like YouTube or anything else, and they get. They they get kind of told that stuff, right? Because it, 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 it's it's part of pop culture, and uh, that in itself, right? Because because it's an established IP that's been around for so long, and and we're we're using an analogy like earlier in our the podcast, we're saying uh, you know, you're within uh, television amigo or within television, you're you're digging up like a a grave, and you're like trying to shake out the skeleton out of the grave. <laughs> Out of, the, out of the coffin, right? <laughs> and that's what they're doing with these old IPs, right? Yeah, they're not they're not substantial and as strong compared to Mario. And, and no, no, they're not. And I mean, even if Tommy cool. had, let's say, seven pack in titles, right? Let's say there's seven pack in games. It's like even the seven stacked on top of each other, and even if you want to say they're each worth nine dollars, which I mean is debatable. Uh, they don't stack up to Mario or Zelda or just one of them, right? I'm not saying like like the both together, but if you just took Zelda and said, here's Breath of the Wild versus your entire lineup, Breath of the Wild wins. Sorry. Sorry, that's just the truth. I mean, I mean, you can argue that, I mean, maybe my grandma can play cornhole with me, but I mean, ultimately, uh, it, it it doesn't compare. It's not even close to the same level. It's it's tough, right? Because he's he's trying to take all these real world world or uh, real world experiences. He's trying to translate them to a screen, like with the cards and, and cornhole, right? Yeah. The, the problem with that is people they don't want to they don't want to s- sort of buy into that. Right? They like they they like the they like reality versus a digital form of that i it's sad to say that but yeah i'd rather have these intimate moments with my family and friends playing cards with real physical cards as opposed to digitally or, or playing beanbag toss cornhole whatever you want to call it right it's, right uh, getting back to the launch titles right uh yeah there haven't been strong launch titles for other platforms but the thing is Tommy's going into this with a clean slate, right? It's it's like a it's a different company, a whole different company. It's not an established company. It's not the same company as television used to be. It's not the exact same company. No, so, it's not. No, it's not. Although he does say he has programmers from the original Intellivision working on this new hardware, working on yeah, games, but, it, which is a whole bizarre thing. Where I'm like, how it's, can how can guys who worked on games total. yeah forty years ago develop a game that's going to compare even to what like one developer can do, right? That's experienced with oh, yeah. modern hardware. You, I don't you know. know how we talked about you know how we talked about the whole system, right? Uh, I forgot what's called uh, the the whole engine. He talked about the whole programming engine. Uh, oh, you, Unity. Unity, yeah. I, I, yeah. Like he talking about Unity. Let's see these old fart programmers, right? <laughs> uh, these guys, you know, their 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 knives are still sharp, right? They, they, they're, these guys are pretty sensible, and uh, they can they can learn new stuff, right? It's an old dog learning new tricks, essentially. These guys, Unity is so easy that these guys can pick it up and they can get going again. They can get. Uh, programming jamming again. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. They jam, on the, they can jam on the keyboard, right? They can they can work up a you know a, a new game in, in no problem, right? In a couple of months, and boom, they're jelly and 
and uh, th they're on, you know, they're on par to like any any other mobile developer out there, right? The, the issue with that is the games, man. Like, uh, the games are like an afterthought to these guys, right? Because they're focusing on the hardware so much. Well, the games, the games are not of quality, right? It's like, yeah, okay, fine. You got the programmer from the original television and he made a dice game. It's like, okay. But I mean, if you go to a programming school, right, where they teach program game programming, that's going to be like a game they make on the first day. They're going to be like, yeah, make some dice, yeah. jiggle around. Uh, and by the time you leave, you're making like Quake, you know, or Doom or something. Yeah, it, it's it's not to say that they can't develop like uh, really good games on there, because because I, I believe they can, right? Especially with the Unity and what it can do. Even a even a programming buddy of mine, he he developed a game with Unity that that I know of. Is it a good good game? Uh, I it's questionable, right? But uh, it, it's it was cool when I tried it. I personally tried it. It's it's meant for kids too, right? He could put this thing, he could port it on Tommy's system too. Well, there you go. That's you should tell thing. him to do that. <laughs> That's a whole different thing, right? I don't want to get into that. But uh, with this skill set, right, he's he's able to yeah work up those games, and uh, it, it's already established that Unity it doesn't take that much skill set to to work up games on there. So these guys have to like. They have to push the boundaries within uh, that banana pie system because it's got limited power. Right. They got to push those boundaries. They got to be really creative on top of that. And uh, you know, like how do they? How do they even? Let's say if they can make really good games, interesting games that can sell people on it and keep people active on the platform. You're you're not marketing right, or, or you're no, your marketing is going to uh, fall flat because they're not established games. Uh, it's on an un unestablished platform, unestablished uh, with unestablished games, right? In, 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 let's call it indie games, right? These yep. are indie games that he's going to put on there. He's got a lot to prove, right? And with the competitive market out there, especially when Tommy come in October, he's going to be competing directly price price wise with the Nintendo Switch. Oh, absolutely. I mean. The PS5 is going to be right around the corner. Xbox Series X is going to be right around the corner. But, I mean, his main competition is going to be the Switch. And the Switch has Mario. It has Zelda. It has Kirby. It has Yoshi. It has, like, all those third-party titles as well. And it's like, uh, that's, that's, that's steep competition. And, I mean, we, I mean, we totally forgot to touch on a major subject, which was... Uh, Nintendo announced the Clubhouse Games, which essentially is a 51 and oh, yeah, 1 yeah. game, right? And and like Clubhouse that. Games basically does every single thing that the Amico is planning to do. Uh all like the different types of board games and like air hockey and I'm pretty sure there was even like a uh, bowling and darts and all that type stuff right and it's like oh geez they just announced that and i think it's coming out next month and it's like okay wow like that's that's what the amico that's the entire premise of the amico in one game i don't think it was int uh intentional right because because i actually no. saw, I, i've seen somebody post about that but let, let's say it, it was uh indirectly intentional right for them to release that they just it was just, uh, I don't even know if, the, if is it Nintendo's uh, product? Like, it's, a, it's, it's, a first party, it's a first-party, it's a first-party title from Nintendo, but yeah. they, it's, it's not the first entry in the series. There was a Clubhouse oh, Games, okay. there was a Clubhouse Games for the DS. So, uh, okay, so, so it's, it's been a franchise that's been around for a while. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like them coming up with a new version of it. So. This thing is like the this this thing is like the Meekle killer. That's what it sounds like to me. It, it might not be intentional, but yeah, it, it kills his launch titles like right right off the, the bat, you know. Yeah. And, uh, 
yeah, well, people that already have a Switch, right? If he's trying to sell, because there's people that buy multiple consoles. I, I myself, right? I, I normally don't buy uh, one console in, or more than one console in one generation. But there's people that have, you either have, uh, you have more money to spend than, than other people, right? So yeah. people buy two consoles, or they'll have like a PS4 and a Switch like I, I do. Or they'll buy all three, right? They'll buy the, the big three. <laughs> yeah, jeez. So, so if he's let's, let's say he's trying to sell some of the most parents that already have switches, right? He's trying to sell them on this new platform because he's trying to convey that it's 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 more family friendly than Nintendo, even though I don't see it with the ESRB ratings. Uh, you know, it, it falls flat. It falls short because why would a parent pay more than they could pay fifty dollars? I think what was Clubhouse Games priced at? Do you know? I think it's forty nine dollars. Yeah, yeah. So or it might be thirty nine so, even. So, so say thirty nine forty, right? Round it up. Uh, so say at that price point, why would they pay that much money compared to way more for a new platform, a new investment, right? A new platform is like a new investment to a parent. Totally. It's and and and, and families, right? Uh, I would say a lot of people are like tight right now. This is like the worst time to release a new platform. Even even for Sony, I would say, and Microsoft, right? Like Nintendo already has theirs out there, right? It's already been out the Switch for like three years. Yeah, uh, to- totally. It's so, bad. It's a bad time for everyone. The, the Nintendo's fine, right? And if the, there's rumors about like a, a Switch Pro, right? Uh, some people tell me like, "Hey, you're you're full of it. There's not going to be a Switch Pro coming out." You know, stop believing that, right? I'm one of those fanboys that think a, a Switch Pro, like I'm on that bandwagon. You know, I'll admit that. <laughs> you know, but you know, people are telling me, "Oh, Switch Pro is not going to come out." Well, I I kind of believe it more now than ever, right? Before I was like, "Oh, I hope it comes out. I hope it comes out." Right? I, I was on I was on that bandwagon, but it, I don't think it's coming out now. Like like my opinion of that has changed. Because because of what's happened with the COVID nineteen thing. Yeah, I mean if okay, so Nintendo's been really smart this generation, right? And I mean if they are planning a Switch Pro, they're probably gonna wait until you know six to eight months after the COVID dies down. I mean any sooner would make them look greedy, right? Yeah. It yeah, would be like sure. uh, why would I why would anybody who owns a switch upgrade to a switch pro when money's tight right it, yeah it's it's like uh sony and microsoft right i i think come come uh, christmas right if tommy's lucky right if tommy's lucky microsoft and, and play, uh, sony are going to be like let's put off this the the launch until till march right and if they do that, right, and say Tommy goes full ahead by trickling a couple of these amigos out in the stores, that that's like a hail mary for him. Like I'm still, yeah. that's like, that that's like, oh, that's the best scenario that could happen for him, right? Because then he has like, he already has the switch to compete with, right? Because the tunnel right now, they're uh, apparently I heard the uh, tunnel has production. It's it's all leveled out now. So now the switch lights are all being. Uh, produced at the same volume as they used to be before this whole uh, this whole uh, COVID thing came out. So apparently in China now they got all that figured out. And uh, so, so yeah, with that in mind, right? Tommy's only going to have to uh, compete directly with a Switch. And that that still might hurt him in the Miko, but that that's what he did by pricing it the way he did, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's picked a, a very competitive time frame to release it. I think one of the toughest things will definitely be getting even just shelf space. Like, if you think about it, right? Because you walk into Walmart and you go to the electronics department there and they have those cabinets, you know, where they have all of the games and the consoles and all that stuff, right? And oh, yeah. you've got... It's 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 almost like standard issue where it's like Sony, then beside it is Xbox, then beside it is Nintendo, and then down in the bottom corner somewhere is like the Genesis Mini and like some third party peripherals, and that's like it. So I mean, 
I don't know. You're going to have to negotiate super hard if you're going to want Walmart, you know, or, or one of those major retailers, Target, for example, to make room, to make room for this console, right? Because otherwise it's going to be like not in the gaming cabinets and it's going to be like on the, uh, you know, one of the aisles with like the Commodore 64 Mini and those other ones that people don't take too serious, right? <laughs> yeah, like... Even even uh, the Super Nintendo Classic and the NES Classic, right? Those were sort of they were put in the Nintendo uh, display case. But there's times where I go in there, right, and they're not in the display case because Nintendo's products, like the Switch stuff, so it's already packed, right? They got new stocks, so they got to take the classic consoles out of there. And those are Amico equivalent like devices, man. They're they're like Raspberry Pis, man, pretty much. Yeah. That's a like it's it's close to the equivalent of Amigo. So, man, even if Nintendo pushes Nintendo pushes their own stuff out into the random shelf or display case at times, it, you know what's going on with Amigo? They're not going to get their own display case, man. Let's be honest here. What's it going to do? Spend one hundred and fifty dollars in line of credit if he even has that, right? And and Rick losing his house over this? No, man, I I don't believe that's true. He's going to lose all his investors' money if he even has that money, man, as collateral. It's a it's a really strange console. I I I'm so confused by it because it's like, you know, if if you just did it online and you spent way less money and you just had like um, develop the console you sell it online, only online, then I think you have a better chance of success because you less you have less overhead, really, right? Or cost. That, that, that's actually the best thing I could I could hear, or I, I've heard. I mean, best best business plan that somebody could execute when it comes to that. You you think about always uh, said, uh, said that to me, yeah, or I haven't heard any other YouTuber talk about that. Yeah, I mean, you think about um. Who's that company that makes those FPGA consoles? Um, analog. Yes, analog. yes, analog, right? I mean, they're they they're making consoles and they're selling them and they're they're obviously doing well enough that they've, you know, made more of them. They've made the NES version and then they made the SNES and then they made the Genesis, I believe. Uh, yeah, and they so keep selling out, man. Yeah, so I mean, there is a market for like niche consoles, and I mean, even like the little handhelds, like there's a there's a few like strange, one-off handheld consoles that are doing okay-ish, but it's like they have zero yeah, like, intention. Uh, Hyperkin's uh, Super Boy, right? Like, yeah, Hyperkin's or or, or any of or any of Hyperkin's yeah. products, right? Any of Hyperkin's yeah, products, like you don't normally walk into like uh let's say Walmart and find Hyperkin on a shelf with um, the PS4, right? They're, they're mostly like on Amazon. I, I haven't seen Hyperkin products in a store ever. At least no, Canada, no, I've, right? I've, I've seen like 8-bit DOS controllers uh, yeah. a little bit at like Walmart. But I mean, besides that, I haven't seen too much. I'm trying to think who else. Like most of those like niche consoles are online only. And I mean the only ones that aren't are the Atari VCS, which is vaporware so far. And uh hey, are you thinking of at game stuff? I've seen those for years in, in uh Walmarts and stuff. <laughs> okay, that's true. I totally forgot about at games. Yeah. But <laughs> but they they're they're not in the cabinet though, right? Or no, maybe they are sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, they are. They're they're in a random display cabinet next to the consoles. They're like, here's yeah. the leftovers. We had no room for these, so they're like in the bottom corner with all the other random stuff. See, see I don't know if Walmart, right? I don't know if they're changing their layout again because when I went in there last week, I went to Walmart. Uh, I didn't go in there to like hoard toilet paper or anything, but <laughs> I went in there to uh, to get groceries, right? So I, I go into Walmart. Uh, not the best place to shop, right? Because their business practices. But anyway, I, I went to Walmart because there's not too many places around, right? In terms of options, 
and uh, I, I was like, oh, I'm going to pass by the video game section. So I go in there, and uh, they didn't even have that random display cabinet anymore. It, it, they had, like, a, they sort of set, set up, like, shelves, right? They removed that random display cabinet the, next to, like, the Nintendo Xbox and uh, PlayStation cabinet, right? The glass display ca- cabinets you usually see when you walk into that area. Yeah. They, they removed that, and they put, like, a... They they put like uh, just shelves, bare bone shelves, no display cabinet in that spot, and they're they put like TVs and they they just put some of the random shit on that shelf, so it's not even a display cabinet, right? You don't even have like uh, <laughs> you don't, you don't even have the what's what's the word uh, I'm trying to think here I'm 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 short for words right now. Uh, you don't have the, the the presentation for for the random shit anymore with the display cabinet, right? You don't even have the presentation. <laughs> it's just a shitty ass fucking shelf now, man. It's not even fancy or anything. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, man. So, so I don't know if this has happened to other WalMarts. Or, or uh, I'm tripping up here. Uh, I don't know if this has happened to other WalMarts, but uh, yeah, like it, it's hilarious, man. The whole thing's. It, it, there's no presentation if this, this is going on in other WalMarts anymore. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure about that, but I know, I I I still stand by my my theory that uh, they're not gonna get like major shelf space, or they're gonna end up with shelf space like we were saying with the uh, the at games, which I totally forgot about even existed. But yeah, if it'd get, be like in that area. Random. They get like a random glass display cabinet. Uh, that I, I I just said that I didn't see there the last time I went there. I didn't see that anymore. In there. Yeah, yeah. Like like say they put that back in there, or that was just one store that did that. Because sometimes they 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 get random sometimes with different Walmart locations with how they lay stuff out. Yeah. Let's just say they have a random display case, right? It's not going to have like a, a Miko. Like like uh decals oh like or, the huge like, decals line, yeah right? that that's what makes like Nintendo PlayStation uh Xbox stand out because they they have a exclusive cabinet in store space just dedicated to them right yeah it's a, it's a digital console right it doesn't take it doesn't take up that much store store space so what you you don't have a <laughs> you you don't have random like uh junk next to your Amico. That's right. Happen, yeah. I yeah. I mean, let's say the at games consoles or or similar are still around, right? You're gonna have the yeah, at, oh, yeah. at games consoles, which are like forty to sixty bucks, hundred on the you know, whatever at the most. Very flashbacks too. <laughs> yeah, the flashbacks, the Commodore sixty four flashback, whatever else, right? Even the Genesis Mini, PlayStation Mini. You're gonna have them all there. They're gonna be like. 40 bucks to 100 bucks, let's say. Then you're going to have the Amico sitting with them. I mean, this is all, like, just just theory. But, I mean, let's say the Amico is sitting with them. Well, the Amico is going to be like, this one is $250. And the parents are going to be like, they're going to walk by the PlayStation, walk by the Xbox, walk by the Nintendo. And if none of them, none of those major consoles with their big, you know, in-your-face advertisements work, if none of those advertisements work, they're going to walk all the way down past all of that to the the cheapo area, and then they're going to be like, $250 or $40? Uh, I'll go with the $40 console, right? I mean... If you're oh, looking man. for if you're looking for a Christmas gift, you're gonna you're and and the Miko is next to like the at games console. I mean, what do you say? You know, as as a dad, you know it's it's obvious. Dad or mom, whoever, whatever person there is, man, they're they're going with the cheaper option most mostly. They're going with the if cheaper they option, or they're going with the option that they know will make that kid. Shut up. Right? Yeah, I oh mean, yeah. if the kid if the kid is like, I want a PS4 or I'm going to be raging for the next year, the parent is going to be buying that PS4. Okay? When you're when you're a kid, right? I, I still see this happen with parents nowadays, man. Uh, your parents always went, hey, what do you want for Christmas, right? They would ask you what you want, right? Because they're, they're not going to play a guessing game with you. They're going to ask, hey, what do you, what do you want? What do you like, right? 
they're they're either going to buy you what you asked for, right? Or, or they're going to ask, or they're going to buy you something that you, you know, because because as a kid, you're not going to just say one thing. Some kids say a bunch of stuff, so they're going to get the kid something that he's 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 said over time, and they don't do it like right before Christmas. Usually, parents like they'll ask you months before, and, and parents aren't stupid. They they try to know what their kid likes. So, oh, absolutely, absolutely. If they're trying to, trying to convince a kid right that they want a miko i don't think it's going to work man no no i don't i i don't I, that's why it's it's like even if let's just say this is the greatest thing ever which i don't believe but let's just say in yeah. theory it is okay? okay uh how are you going to convince the average person that without like like a demo Right, because then you would need a demo kiosk, and then in order to pay for those demo kiosks, you're needing money. Microsoft had money to put those demo kiosks in every GameStop, right? Back when the uh, when the Xbox came out, or when the PS2 was coming out, putting those demo kiosks in, and yeah, so, sure so, that, that's, they killed it. So the Sony DVD had, uh, yeah, well, yeah, that, and then they had like demos for like. Metal Gear Solid, or uh, or uh, what else was there? Even like the football games, like Madden, right? It's like, oh my goodness! At that time, you'd be like, wow, that looks so incredible. Even though now it looks like crap. Yeah, yeah, they they they, they have they're it was like a different time, man. Like, cause cause now it's it's really hard to innovate the like graphically, right? You gotta have a lot of power to to like like push people with visuals. The, oh yeah! Oh yeah! Absolutely. And and, and uh, it's sort of getting like uh, yeah, you know, like uh, before the, I, I guess you know when the millennium started, right? There's like a bottlenecking of technology happening at that point. Yeah, uh, it was really hard. F like I'm not talking about the turn of the 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 millennium, right? When the the PS2 came out and the Dreamcast and stuff. I'm talking about like that that weird time after those systems came out, like uh, and uh, you know, right before. Like yeah, right before the PS3 came out, right, it was hard for them to innovate. The PS3 didn't really innovate that much. They sort of did. Sony did the same thing as they did before, but they had, they had proprietary stuff that, like, it was it was it was like a a media c uh, competition between them and in uh, Microsoft with HD DVDs and Blu-rays, right? So yeah. They weren't they weren't really innovating, but but you know they still had something that consumers needed, right? And with the Miko, the thing is, there's nothing there that consumers need, and there's not innovation either being put put with this thing. It's not new hardware. I already established that in one of my videos. Yeah, yeah. There, it, there's not much innovation, at least. I mean, uh, you could argue the controls are innovating. Whether they're good innovation is a whole other argument. But. Uh, yeah, there's not a lot going for it, I would say. Uh, <sighs> graphics, graphics, I would say, in general, like, if you're looking at PS4, moving on to PS5, yeah, the graphics are pretty much the same. I watched some gameplay, actually, today for the Xbox Series X, which is a new generation console, right? And it pretty much just looks like an Xbox game xbox one game you know but uh yeah uh, yeah graphics i mean they're kind of where they are gonna be for a while and i know that that's not the aim of the amico but it's like okay if that's not your aim then you better better make fun games and these games don't look fun and if they are fun you're gonna have to convince me of them you know that they're fun yeah. It, it, it prove to me that they're fun, you know. Get some well, well, kiosks out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. How are you, in, in, and you've got to remember we're we're like more we're more up and ons with the news of the of the consoles, right? So it's like, how would your average mom or father even know what it is and know that it's fun, right? Because they're not gonna go to YouTube and search in television and then be like, yeah. This game looks fun. They're just gonna look they're, 
on the box, through, maybe? Uh, they're not going to sit through a three-hour interview of Tommy going off with a sales pitch, man. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no way. You know, that, that, <laughs> that sales pitch is for, like, the uh, television fans, right? Basically, because no mom and pop are going to sit around and watch a three-hour podcast, basically. And we were talking about, like, who's it targeted for before? So Tommy starts off targeting, uh, he's targeting millennial moms, as he said. And then he sort of, it's sort of twisted, right? It's sort of changed over time. Now it looks like he's targeting really, like, retro gamers, right, from this first and second generation. Uh, he's trying to he's trying to use social media, right, to get the word out w- through word of mouth. He's he's still like a, a vacuum salesman, uh, a person one one on one interviews, right? It's it's like a vacuum salesman essentially. One on one salesman. Yeah. Uh, and and it's it's antiquated sales tactics. And uh, I I understand that you know like he has his own ways of doing things, but. Like you were saying before, you know, uh, through kiosks, through yeah, through kiosks and online only retail, right? That would probably be a better uh, option. That's the best business plan he could probably proceed with this, besides trying to do what he's trying to do, right? Yeah, I just when I think about it, I'm just like your best chance for success is to just produce the amount of mod of the amount of units that are pre-ordered and that's it and then just be like we're going to produce more units as they're ordered and ship them directly from the manufacturer you know like sony doesn't sell directly from sony at least i don't think so i i i think nintendo sells used consoles on their website i don't know if you can buy new switches directly from them but I think you can buy used ones. But uh, I, I've only ordered once from Nintendo's actual like online store. I, I got like a Switch cases, and uh, yeah, like they ship that directly from their headquarters. That stuff. But they right. have like a warehouse, right? And it's usually excess stuff where yeah, refurbished consoles. I don't think they sell new stuff on there at all. No, you have to go through like a, a third party, right? Like a like a store, a retailer. They got those kind of contracts set up with distri- uh, distributors. They they don't want the distributor doesn't want to compete with with them <laughs> themselves, right? They don't right. Want Nintendo competing against them, you know. It's, it's yeah, because then Nintendo could offer a cheaper price, right? Nintendo could be like, well, we're we're making it directly. We'll offer it to you for ten dollars less, and then the retailers would be like, well, f you, right? You, you well, might see that happening. You might see that happening, right? Because. Because like you're saying, uh, you mentioned EB, right? Or E3, I mean. Uh, they they might make their announcement later on uh, with Amico around e, E3 time. And everybody's been pu- pushing back. And uh, it's sort of like all these companies have been pushing away from E3, doing their own announcements. Like, uh, yeah, Nintendo does Nintendo Direct. And, uh, yeah. What Sony does, like, uh, something gamers, I forget what it's called. State of Play. State of play, yeah. State of play. It sounds like uh, some communist kind of announcement. Oh my god! <laughs> the state is coming after you. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, like, uh, imagine if they decide, hey, let's 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 push back and be more self-efficient, you know? so or self-sufficient, you know? Yeah. Uh, let's let's. What, what do we need? Like, we can just sell it directly. Like Nintendo, Nintendo might go down that road. And all these other consoles, if they're already doing it with the, the promotion aspect, uh, Nintendo could be doing it with the retailing aspect too. They could cut out, cut out those, cut out like Amazon, cut out Walmart altogether. They're big enough that they don't need these retailers, and they already got their own warehouses and stuff. All they had to do is expand on that, right? They don't need Walmart, Amazon, like any online retailer. They don't need Best Buy. They, they don't need. Uh, GameStop especially. <laughs> yeah, GameStop a train product, right? wreck. And, and and yeah, like that overhead's kind of tough to to handle too, right? Like compared to having other people handling the overhead. But I I could see that happening. Not this uh, this this generation, the next generation, if things just don't go all digital. Period. You know. True. Yeah. 
I'm actually kind of surprised. I was just Googling something real quick. I'm surprised that the Intellivision Amico isn't on Amazon. I mean, you would think that'd be like the best route, you know? Because then people could just order it online. You only have to manufacture the amount that are ordered. So, I mean, he must... I don't know. It's so confusing. I mean, I know in that one video he said he had a purchase order. He has a purchase order for 100,000 units or something. I I don't know how true that is. I'm going to have to just take his word for it. But it's uh, okay. like... So, so the, one, the one thing I want to, like, yeah, talk about now is... Yeah, like, yeah, the distribution, like you're talking about, but he, he's got this, uh, he's got this thing definitely coming out in North America, right? So yeah. he's, he's already talked about Canada. Uh, so he's got, now he's got, uh, the countries that are covered right now, officially, from what I know up to the state is, he's got the states in Germany, right? So the right. online retail aspects are already covered. Yeah. So he's, he's, he's mentioned in podcasts that in interviews he's going to be doing, uh, Canada for sure. But the price, you know, it, he's going to have to price it way lower, man. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it's just like with conversion, it, it's going to be a hard sale in Canada. Canada is going to be like, for me personally, I, I'm, I look at it and I'm like, with the conversion, you know, close to like 400. I don't know what the conversion is, but it's going to be a hard sale, man. It's going to be more expensive than the, the Switch, man, with the conversion. <laughs> well, I mean, if you just do a direct conversion on the yeah. black or white unit you're looking at 350 canadian but i mean that's if they don't top it up right because even nintendo when you do a direct conversion i don't think it's the same price i mean let me let me double check they, there they, adjust, they usually adjust it sometimes they they usually the uh europe gets screwed i know europe gets screwed so tommy's even though he's bundling that music in with his uh, Germany release or pre-orders, I mean, for the German Amigos, he he's sort of uh, that music and stuff. Uh, you know, like like I don't buy a console to be bundled with like like I'm not saying it's random junk, but it, you know it's random stuff that you're getting like his music. You know, it's like he's promoting his his business and his side business at, at once. <laughs> Doing that, man. Right. Well, again, that goes back to the whole thing I was saying before where he's relying on his clout of the past rather than uh, being like, this console will sell itself, right? I mean, oh, that's that's really what it should be. The console should sell itself. It should just be like, well, I don't, I don't have to throw in my... I mean, oh, oh, perfect example. I mean, Final Fantasy, right? When they, when yeah. they come out, they're not like, hey, we're going to include the soundtrack for free. Please buy, a, buy our console, or sorry, buy our game. They're like, no, no, no. We know you like our stuff. So if you, if you want it, you can buy the soundtrack separately. They're not just like, hey, here's some extra stuff. Just please, pretty please buy, right? And so it's like, okay, uh, if, if the console was was legitimately going to just sell itself, you wouldn't have to throw in anything. You wouldn't have to throw in uh, CDs or Game whatever boards, else there is. Like the, there is eShop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you were going to buy games, right, If we already know like it's going to be eShop, right? It's going to be mostly a digital console or digital uh, Android box, whatever you want to call it. So, you know, people have no choice but to buy digital games if they don't come with it. So by him including that with his one uh, GameStop promotion with the, the Galaxy Purple one, the, the $25 card, even though you're paying $50 more on, on top of the other two, uh, the white and the black one. Yeah. It, it was kind of funny, man. Like, I pointed that out in one of my videos, and I'm just like, I, you know, I got flack for it, but it's not it's not, uh, it's not a good value if, if you're not – you're not getting that fifty dollars too that you're paying on top of it. You're only getting twenty five of that. And GameStop's pocketing uh twenty five dollars on top of that. He says something like, uh, I, I heard him say, 
Oh, you know, uh, Game, GameStop just structured that that way because because they always have to have a special version of a, a console release with them, right? They gotta have something exclusive to get people to go to GameStop. And let, let's say that's true, right? And, and he said something like uh, GameStop or the retailers set their own prices, right, for the for the consoles. But they also they they have a suggested price for a reason, right? And Nintendo, right? They they have contracts set up where they could price or they, they maintain the pricing with all the stores. So why can't right, you do that yeah. with the contract? Yeah, right. I'm pretty sure he said something like the MSRP for the purple was manufacturer's two, suggested two, retail two, price. That's yeah. What it means. yeah. 280 or something. I don't know if I saw that on Twitter or where I saw that. But uh he did state that somewhere. It was like 280 but but uh they're charging more because it's only a manufacturer recommended price and can't control if GameStop charges more. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't look good on them because yeah, he didn't set up a, a good contract with GameStop. You got to think you know, he the fact that they didn't put it on the front page it it, it just shows like it doesn't show like a good situation that he has already set up with GameStop or why he approached GameStop, man, or they approached him and he, he didn't think to himself, Hey, uh, these guys might go bankrupt this year. This, this is bad for a company, you know? Yeah. I mean, they are struggling. You're, you're kinda, yeah. I got, I got you now. Yeah. Like I, I hope that they don't go under right. And people lose their money on this thing, but they might. Yeah, jeez. I, I got you. Yeah. So, yeah. Is it working now? Okay. It's it's working. So, I I I we should just leave it off. Like, yeah, we're supposed to end this earlier, but um. Yeah, we, we could we can wrap so up there. I mean, you could talk. We could talk yeah. forever. There's so much to go on about, but I mean, uh, we'll leave it there. Uh, we'll leave it for the angry fans to yell at you. And uh, see where it goes from there, I guess. <laughs> okay, yeah, so. Uh, oh, thanks for joining me, Kev. Uh, oh, yeah, maybe that's I'll no have problem. You on again to talk. Yeah, I'll see if anybody else reaches out to me and wants to talk to me on this podcast. But yeah, thanks for uh, hanging out with me today. So, oh, yeah. signing off with Kevin.